you have faith in the FBI today? I would love to be able to say, what's the end game on this, boys? The only time that we would hold a search warrant and not execute it, even though we're prepared to execute it, would be what we call an approach. So for instance, it's off the charts that people would sit and accuse the FBI of being weaponized. Off the Why? fucking chart. Wrong. What? Wrong. It's basically a diversion of this election cycle. That's what we want. We won't want any tweeting and be able to put your own sport coat on. Yeah. Done! You're elected. We're not planting. We're not planting evidence. We're, okay, we're not okay. going to do that. For instance, I'll give you for instance, there was a sitting United States Senator that I searched in the summer of 2001. forget he had a hash pipe that was in the shape of a dick what's cooking everybody i am joined in the bunker today by my very good friend and your favorite former special agent in charge of the fbi jim diorio and yeah we're breaking down the entire trump raid jim obviously has a lot of thoughts on this and he didn't leave any on the table. The dude came in here as fired up as I've ever seen him. Obviously, episode 48 is one of the most popular episodes we've ever done in here. People loved him in 73, 74, and 100 as well. So I know you guys are always looking forward to him coming back. And this one was quite timely. It was quite timely. So we recorded it on Wednesday night. There's one or two things we discussed that we've since found out, but other than that, this is mostly just a full analysis of the situation. He got into even like some things he would do to fix the FBI, and in the last hour, we talked a lot about intelligence and some of the agencies as well. So, loaded episode. Please share it around with your friends. If you are on YouTube right now, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on the video, and as always, would love to see you down in the comments section below. To everyone who is on Apple or Spotify, thank you for checking out the show over there. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a five-star review on either one of those platforms, and I look forward to seeing you guys again for future episodes. That said, you know what it is. I'm Julian Dory. This is Trend of Fire, and please welcome my very good friend, Special Agent Jim DiOrio. Jimmy D. What's up, dude? Make it make sense for me, brother. Oh, I wish <laughs> I, I wish I could make sense of it myself, but I'm going to give it a really, really good shot. So excited I, to be here. I am glad you're here. This was last minute. It was an idea immediately thrown out by a bunch of fans at the same time. One guy hit me, and then two other people were hitting me while I was on the phone with you. Then a bunch of people hit me later in the day, and I was like, he's literally coming in tomorrow. So naturally... This whole Trump raid has people, depending on what side of the issue or if they're in the middle of the issue, in certain cases, up in arms. And it's very natural to think that, for sure, because it is unprecedented. We haven't seen a former U.S. president ever be raided in, Never. in, in any facet by the federal government. So we'll get into everything that's going on right now, what the latest updates are and all that. But first of all, what, what do you make of this? Well, my first, you know, I, I got to be honest, my first initial reaction was one of anger. And I say that because, you know, as we all know, um, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm tight with, with the audience and I feel like they understand who I am and what I'm about. And so the first, definitely, definitely the first response or more, I'm embarrassed to say the first reaction was anger based on the fact that my old agency Many of my people who are still there, who are still doing the job, um, what they must be feeling. And, and you know, we were talking a little bit, right, you and I on the phone, and I talked about the fact that I've been reached out to by a whole bunch of my former folk. Um, at the FBI. At the FBI, and, and some of my, many of my classmates from West Point. And, and the overriding um, kind of request is, dude, what's going on? You know what's happening? Where where are we at? How is how is does this possibly get off the ground? Um, what do you think? Are you okay? How are the guys? How are the girls? How are the bureau? You know, powers that be? 
and um, it was it was mind absolutely mind boggling for me to sit and kind of digest it all, and then try to come to peace so that I could sleep last night. Honestly, um, I had a hell of a time sleeping, which which isn't completely abnormal for me because my my head races, but at the same time. Where, you know, where is this coming from? What's the purpose of it? And what are we trying to achieve? And like you said, man, this has never been done before to a sitting president. And I even started thinking back as far as like, you know, our first director, right? J. Edgar Hoover, who, you know, spanned, I think, I think it's eight or nine presidents the guy worked for. Yeah, with. he lasted a while. <laughs> yeah, he lasted a while, right? Which is why the 10 year, you know, kind of uh, right. political appointee position is put into place, rightfully so. And I was thinking like, um, you know, that now there was a guy who had some agenda, right? Oh, and, yeah. and um, but we got away from that supposedly, right? And my director, who I came in, I've talked to before uh, about before a lot, is Louis Free, one of the one of the greatest men I've ever met, worked for, or known, and I feel um, and a good friend. And then we go through the ranks, but but at the end of the day, what I tried to digest, and I want to try to talk a little bit about. Um, the process, which I think is important to understand, and even self thought and self, you know, kind of um, realization of the process again, bringing myself back up to speed um, from where I've been and what I've done in the past, and thinking about it. And there was no place to really put it for me because I'm like, whoa, there's no other way to look at this. And this is my initial reaction. Then this is a, this is a shot across the bow, right. um, you know, trying to remove. Um, uh, any chance of this dude running for president again, right? Do you um, think that's what it was? I don't know. Or do you think, I don't know. put on your little hat right now, do you think it's know. the opposite? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I know you've watched that little piece that he put out immediately after, right? Uh, like a three or four minute clip. I actually um, didn't. It's no, actually, I read his statement. It, the statement is is the clip, right? Okay. So basically you'll see, and, and, and it's a it's clearly a campaign item oh, yeah. number one right? and like donate here yeah <laughs> exactly but you know i thought about a lot of different things that go into the process of actually um obtaining a search warrant and how it goes down and then some of the things that i thought about ways that things you have to do in order to secure this search warrant um lent, you know kind of leads me to believe that clearly there's some other things at play not right. just outside of the party um, or not just outside of the DOJ, um, not just outside of the Trump family or the Trump support group and team, but inside that. It has to be. There's no other way to secure this particular court order. Um, I saw a bunch of talk, too, about this, about the judge. Uh, I, I briefly saw his name, the judge we'll, who signed we'll get off. To that. Yeah. We'll, we'll get Because um, I'm going to ask you specifically yeah, about the process yeah, at some point yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, but I think my, my overriding reaction, again, embarrassed to say it wasn't a response, it was a reaction, was like, what the fuck is going on? Right. Like, who, who is breaking down um, in the leadership aspect of the of the DOJ to include the Bureau? Listen, you know my thoughts on Chris Ray. I think he's a really nice man. The head of the um, FBI. The head of the FBI. He's a really nice man. He's probably a really good attorney. I mean, Lord knows, he defended Chris Christie, as we've talked about before. Uh, he was Chris Christie's attorney during Bridgegate. Wait, really? Yes. I didn't yes. know that. He I was don't one think of the attorneys. talked about that. Okay, so he was one of the attorneys during Bridgegate, right? And actually, Christie's cell phone sat in his safe in his law office, Chris Ray. And it didn't get broken into. Correct. <laughs> and didn't get broken into. Uh, and I like, we'll talk more about this, but the whole deal with they brought us, you know, a basically like a safe cracker in. Yeah. The, no, it's you're obligated to open the fucking safe. Yes. Period. Once it's in there, I understand how that goes down. Yes. But I'm going to, we're, I'm going to ask a yeah. lot of questions around the full one, search. One million percent. And, and what I, went on. And I want to do that for sure. But I, I think that was kind of the anger of once again being disappointed in um, the agency that I served so honorably and so long for and with so many fantastic people that I just felt bad. I, I was heartbroken, to be honest, that we would we would kind of utilize this particular method of garnering information that there's many easier and better ways to go about. And it's heavy coming from you because I know how much you do truly care about it. You were there for 25 years before that with people who have watched this podcast and love Special Agent Jim DiOrio, they know your deal. You were West Point, Army Ranger, the whole bit. You've given your life to this country. And over the past four or five years, it's been the first time ever in your adult life that you're 
working outside privately on on your own company and business. But you know, I I said in there, could it be the opposite? Like, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, definitely. Because it does like when we look at this from a high level. It's very interesting coming from you because you've been on. You're not a Trump guy. You don't like Trump at all. Your friends were around him, Esper, Pompeo, stuff like that. Obviously, Mark has put out, or Secretary Esper, has put out a memoir of sorts about his time Sca- serving, scathing mem- right about his time as Secretary of Defense, and and certainly was no fan of the Donald. But looking at this from the high level. I see a guy who is almost doing something new every week to show that he's he's gone nuts and literally like writing himself off. And yet then I keep seeing the same playbook that I watched in 2015 and 2016 happen where the media and the full response basically drives people right into his fucking arms. Because I don't care what this was all about and we're going to talk about that for sure. But if you were going to do this, I don't give a shit what part of that you are. If you're one of the agents collecting the stuff or you're the guy who signed off on, on it, you knew what the headlines were going to be. The headlines were – it could have been about nothing and it may very well be about nothing. But the headlines are going to read FBI raids former President Trump's house. And suddenly everyone's going to be like, well, I'll be dipped in shit. They really do – they are out to get this guy, right? And people will ignore all the other stuff. And suddenly we'll be looking at – instead of four years of Trump, we'll be looking at 12. Because we're doing another four Same. right now, and then we'll do four more with him in office. So I don't think that's a good outcome. But I really want to start at the top because I have an absolute expert, someone who's done these raids a million times in front of me. So my burning question on this is when you get an investigation, right, it comes on your desk, whether it's referred to you from police who have already started it or some sort of inquiry, whistleblower, whatever it is, is the first thought. How soon can we get a warrant to be able to go into X place or Y place where where the suspect is? Not the first thought. I would say that's in the top 10. You know, it's it's a nice method. It's a way to do business. It's a way to garner information and evidence because the Bureau's only job is to collect evidence that uh, help to, um, you know, allow federal prosecutors or the DOJ to move a case forward. That's our job. Collect evidence, period, with interest around the United States of America. Right. And upholding the law. And upholding the law, but you know, of crimes, obviously. But we don't we don't necessarily say, yeah, we gotta get a search warrant because it gives us an opportunity to get everything that we need and to to move through and whatever. So I wanna explain more about that. But it's funny, you know, you said something j- just a second ago, and that also crossed my mind as far as um it, you know leading people or having people think that he is being ramrodded, right? So who would be in best position to benefit from that? Well, himself, his family, those around him, right? So when we talk a little bit about the process of a search warrant, I want to come back to that sure. and talk a little bit more about why yeah. that kind of sprung as well in my head. Um, you, you know, it's 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 kind of um, it's kind of disheartening to see the bureau also. Um, talk about this or prove this or show this as a raid, quote unquote, a raid. We were taught, uh, and I taught my people along the way for, for, I guess, you know, a couple of iterations of new folks coming up and becoming senior managers or senior agents and senior managers and ultimately are the leadership of the Bureau. Now, we never talked about raids because that sounds like, um, you know, it it kind of, it sounds a little bit paramilitary. We're raiding. No, we're executing a search warrant. And we're executing a search warrant that's very specific in scope and that um, has, prob- you know, th- there's a factor with regards to probable cause that says it's more likely than not that we will find evidence of a specific crime, a, a, a specific criminal action. So I am very curious and kind of antsy about getting a chance. And usually they'll publish this particular warrant at some point or at least um, what we call uh, the B, it's kind of an addendum which lists everything that we're looking for. It might not give the actual lead up. They may not be able to release the lead up of, um, you know, here's how this was presented to a federal judge. Uh, and then ultimately, here's here's the different things. Here's the scope of the warrant, things that we're looking for that prove 
one of, I think it's 2,000 federal statutes that can be violated when based you, on this. When you hand someone a warrant like this one, yes. for example, we're going to yes. search a 128-room building. Yes. How long is that warrant? Is this like one of those SEC contracts where yes. it's like 50 pages no, and a this bunch is gonna of be, print? No, this or? is going to be huge because um, each particular room and area has to be specified with a description of that area, what it looks like, where the most likely spaces are going to be that evidence can be stored, mm -hmm. what kind of evidence we're looking for, where the, file, where the file cabinets are, where the desks are, if there's computers, where the windows are, what the outside of that particular room looks like, to include decor, the outside of the home, the gates, the fences, uh, the, the water around, all that has to be particularly described. And all of that can actually be... Um, kind of, uh, you know, in, in a court hearing can actually be defended and actually be tried as part of a court hearing to suppress and to suppress evidence. Sure. So if you think about the specis the, um, the specifics with regards to uh, this particular warrant, it took a hell of a lot of time, it took a hell of a lot of effort, and it took somebody on the inside. What do you mean by that? Well, okay, so I, how am I going to get... Back in the old days, without giving up too, informa too much information, and I say the old days only because I'm an old guy, and back when I worked cases, and we would want to pursue a search warrant application. By the way, which most good – we always talk about the, the two-thirds rule. So, so the good United States – assistant United States attorneys would want us to exhaust every other method of investigation. Can you just to, tell to people who haven't those. heard what sure. the two-thirds rule is? Yeah, so two-thirds rule is you know basically you've got – Two people that kind of do the work and one person that doesn't do a damn on thing. On average. On average, right. right? So, and that's accepted and that's just the way it is. So, same thing on the U.S. Attorney's Office, same thing on the DOJ. You got a couple of people that are looking to just move through, get their experience, and go get the big job, right? So, you always want that career federal prosecutor. Because they're going to listen to your, uh, you know, kind of your plan of action, your investigative plan of action. And that would be, for me, ultimate. the ultimate goal in a criminal investigation is to get up on people's phones, right, to wiretap. You know how impossible that is? It's, it's pretty much almost impossible without exhausting every other method right. of investigation. Because between, I'm going to forget the years, but there was like a seven or eight year bracket. I want to say it was like 05 to 2012, but don't quote me on that part, yeah. where there were... And I forget the title. What's the title for uh, it's wiretaps? It's a Title Three. Title Three is no, a wiretap. No, there's a, there's a, yeah, it, that might be it. But yeah. there's another. There's a superseding law that they wrote. Yeah, in. like Title Eighteen that has portions of it that indicate Title Three, which Maybe. is the, which is really Title Three is more the application method. You know, so what are you actually doing? How are you actually picking right. up the transmissions? The, right. The bottom line is between those years. Yeah. There were roughly twenty thousand applications and secret courts to get these wiretaps on yes. behalf of government and the judges turned down six mm -hmm. okay the idea that of 20,000 investigations 19,994 of them had fully exhausted everything and had proven on paper correctly with the proper evidence that they had fully exhausted everything is ridiculous. So I am a little skeptical when I, I hear someone say, but, like, oh, it's really, really hard but, to get. But I can understand that, that you're skeptical, but the, the, of the millions that were brought forward and discussed with discussed. regards to being able to okay. do this. So, you know, th there are certain things that you you're can't do. You're saying before going yeah, to the court. Right. So okay. one of the things that, you know, we used to talk about and what – um a lot of the really good federal prosecutors would say is, hey, let's surveil. Why can't we surveil these folks? Because what we're trying to do sometimes on a Title III is just to make connections, to make links, right? So if I can quickly and lazily hear it on the phone that you're talking to me, well, I know we're linked in some form or fashion, and then I can go and do my work. But I can also surveil you. And I can also tell, oh, wait a minute, you guys met up, you went and grabbed a cup of coffee, you know, okay, so you're linked in that particular form or fashion, right? So um, what we always looked at, though, was is there some type of counter surveillance acumen on the part of the people that we're looking at? And um, depending on the nature of the crime and depending on uh, kind of the groups of folks that we were looking at, yeah, some of them were extremely skilled in counter surveillance. So we couldn't do that, right? Sure. Uh, one, of, one of the methods that you have to exhaust is interview. Yes. Interviews, right? So, so am I going to come? Let, let me come to the drug dealer and say, "Hey, man, are you selling drugs?" Another. Oh, exhausted. Yeah. Let's go up on the phones. No, yeah. of course not. Right? Of course yeah. not. 
But I think one of the bigger things that you got to think about when it comes to a search warrant, and, and I heard a lot of this going on in the last 24 hours with people talking heads basically sitting on the news channels and saying, you know, um, th things basically talking about the process and then talking about the probable cause that it takes to get a search warrant, you know, kind of signed off on. What they haven't mentioned is the fact that the investigation that surrounds that application for a search warrant is normally so exhaustive by by the two thirds is so exhaustive. The good ones. The good ones. So exhaustive that that search warrant is has already been written throughout the course of the plan of act the investigative plan of plan of action. When I used to think of it, it's a very it's a guide it's an outline for what down the line may be the indictment or down the line, maybe the information that that particular person who's charged or not charged may sign to, to sign a plea agreement. It, it lines up exactly what our thought process is going forward in order to, one, prove the investigation and our kind of our plan of action, what we're going to do, and two, it's utilized to gain and garner that search warrant. Now, we cannot do that without having a source or someone on the inside that's feeding us that information. That's what that's what concerns me. So your implication there, if I'm understanding this correctly, is that there is someone presently working around Trump for him in some capacity who is effectively leaking in their rat. In this that case. or the only other thought there is that there's a source – that at one point was working in or around mm. that knows of or had information regarding the presence or existing existence of evidence that is in or around that residence, right? However, that being said, there's a very, very strong stipulation within uh, search warrant kind of um, law that says you must have a fresh kind of recollection or a fresh idea with regards to why you're going in now. So in other words, if six or eight months ago, uh, it was known that some paper or some document that was, you know, supposed to be secured was sitting in on the desk in room 121 in, in the mansion. Um, where is it today? That's the question that a good federal prosecutor is asked. Well, okay. It was there eight months ago. Well, what, what some of us have shit that was been laying around for eight months sure. in our house, but a lot of us don't. A lot of us don't. So we have to continue to freshen up right to the 30 day pre operation kind of time frame. Why is 30 days? Significant? I mean, it's 30, 60, something along those lines. There, there's a statute uh, implication that indicates, hey, we need a fresh warrant. So sometimes we'll do, sometimes what the Bureau will do is, mm. is they'll, um, you know, they'll check mail. They'll do like, you know, a, a kind of a is, is mail from a statement on a bank still going to this address. Wait, hold on. Now you lost me. What does yeah. that have to do with it being with what they're going after being fresh? Well, I mean, the bottom line is you want to you want to make sure in this case, we know. I mean, it's pretty publicized that Donald Trump's residence is that yes. residence. But I'm talking like take it outside of the realm of this. Take it to, hey, somebody was leasing a home in downtown Philadelphia. Right. And six months ago a source or someone else was visiting that home and saw a weapon, a legal weapon sitting on top of a countertop within that kitchen, right? Well, we don't know if the lease is now expired and that person's gone. So we don't want to take a chance at going into the wrong residence or the wrong house. So, the so only, we freshen it up. The only level of proof, when you say freshen it up, yes. the only level of proof is that the structure or place where they exist or go is yes. still the thing. That's Correct. it. That's but the it. other part, that that six months ago, that gun thing doesn't have to be fresh. You can be like, someone saw it. That's good enough. We proved they still live as there. As long as we gone. know the person's still there. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. That's Absolutely. an interesting, Absolutely. that's very important. Absolutely. Okay. So um, my thought would be, and the conspiracy theorist side of me says, someone was informing the FBI, and then the FBI was informing a federal prosecutor that, in fact, the, this is the way it looks in here. These are where the things that we're looking for were placed. Uh, this is what the description of those things were. This is who carried the information or those, F, those pieces of evidence into, the, into or out of the location. And most importantly, hey, guys, you better hustle up and go because I have a feeling that those things can be destroyed if we don't get it 
you know, X, whatever the, whatever the hour was. Well, I guess they came in the evening, right? Um, the, well, they came at, they were, the, this is the other thing. Yeah. Now it is a 128 room building that yep. they were in. Yep. But they were there reportedly, according to multiple sources online, from approximately 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 6.30 p.m. Okay. How normal is it to have a, what's that, nine and a half hour check? I've had, I've had 36 hour search warrants. Really? On yeah. what? So, can you give All me an example types of, of that? cases. Like, like I've had one on an environmental case. So, where what there would was take so much, hours? There, there was so much, so much to discovered and documented and reviewed to make sure it was in within scope. And then there was a larger area that came off of the fact our initial search discovered, hey, we may have to look in X area as well. So it expands the search. Where was this? Like what? You don't have to say exactly yeah. where, but what type of place? What type of? A factory, like a manufacturing okay. facility. Okay. So, so a manufacturing big facility. Big place. Okay. Yeah, big place uh, with a storefront and with a, its own manufacturing piece to it. Now, what about the rules of what you take too? Yes. So are there types of, do, do certain warrants say you have a warrant to search the premises, the premises for X object, but not anything else. And then are there some warrants that say you have a warrant to search everything? No, there's no warrant that's going to say everything. The scope's going to be defined, however, um, and it's going to be defined not just by chronological order, like in dates. So from one September 1999 to one September 198, you know, 19 or 2006. Um, but it's also going to say here are the things that pertain to these particular items. Um, you know, these, these particular topics, I should say. So let's just say uh, everything that pertains to, um, you know, United Airline ticket vouchers, okay. let's say from this date to this date, right? So you can take that. But you can review as you're looking for that stuff. You have to review everything, right? So you can't just assume, oh, wait a minute, there's a box for United Airline ticket vouchers. Grab that and just leave everything else behind. No, you're going to review everything to make sure you're not missing one that was stuck into another file or whatever. However, that being said, there's plain view is a, is a doctrine within any law enforcement, any statute, any legal um, kind of representation. And plain view means, hey, if I'm in here and I'm only searching for documents, but all of a sudden I look over and I see a pipe bomb, okay, that's 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 plain view. However, what you're what you're required to do is to call back to the federal magistrate and to through your federal prosecutor and prepare a supplemental warrant. So I find a pipe bomb on the table. Yep. I can't go grab it right now. I need to take out my iPhone. You have and to call. secure it. You have to secure it in the best way. You so know, that's a bad example. That's a bad example. But what I mean is you might have to back off, you know, people. Let let's just say it's it's an it's a handgun. Okay. That's better because it's not going to blow up in your face, right. right? So it's a handgun and you know that uh the person is a convicted felon and they're not supposed to have a handgun, right? So at that point you can secure it but you can't take it until you gain a, supple um, a supplemental search warrant. So that can you can think about the time that may take in order to say, oh, my God, I, I was looking for X, but I found Y. Y still pertains to a crime, but it's not the crime that we actually have permission to search on behalf of. So now I have to call and, and go through the process of gaining an additional supplement to this warrant. How often do those rules get All broken? All the time. Oh, broken never. Honestly, N never, never. I mean, the lawyer could just claim right away. Well, that was it. illegal. Yeah, exactly right. Now, what I, the, the mistakes that are sometimes made, and and they're not um, intentional mistakes. You may have a situation where, hey, um, I looked, you know, I, I looked at a thick file. Let's say a two inch file that indicated United Airlines vouchers, ticket vouchers, right? And I looked and I said, oh, th this is this looks pretty good. I went through a hundred out of the hundred and fifty of them. And they're all within scope, they're all the right thing, but there's something stuck in there that was a letter, a love letter from uh, the subject to his wife. And I just forgot, I, I didn't look through that, right? That's that's a mistake, that's an error, right? And you would go back and as you're cataloging all of this evidence, you're like, holy cow, we took something we're not supposed to have taken, that happens. Mm. And then that's simply um, an exchange between the defense attorney and the US Attorney's Office to say, hey, here are the six things that we took out of scope. Um, erroneously uh and you know here's the reason why it happened and it's just as simple as the explanation i just gave hey i was digging through um you know i looked through something i thought it was all in place and and i put it forward as evidence and it wasn't so what about 
that story you told, I think the very first podcast you ever did in here about the one guy you'd been investigating for a while and you couldn't find money in the house and he looked at you and said, well, you're not allowed to check. The warrant doesn't cover the garage. And then you went out and got a lot of fucking money from the garage. Yeah. Is that one where you had to then call up and say, subject said, warrant doesn't yeah, cover the we, garage, so we, now we need a warrant? We did make that call, but we knew that it wasn't a detached garage. It was part of the structure. So we, oh, knew, we, were, right. we, we knew we were okay doing that, but that's a great example. Let's say it was a detached garage. So it was a separate building, and in the course of our preparing to actually explain the, the premises, our source or, or our undercover agent said, yeah, no, the, the garage is, is attached. And then we got there and said, oh, no, it's not, and there's an office upstairs, whatever mm. that might be. Then that becomes a, a story of, hey, we need to get a supplemental. So we would make that call, explain, hey, look, um, you know, we were told over the course of time, in fact, this was an attached garage. It's not. There was an office on top of it. We do believe that there's a chance that there's some evidence in those particular areas. Um, would you be willing to issue a supplemental warrant? And then the judge will think about it and say, okay, um, did the source or did the undercover ever see the subject traveling between the home and into that garage is there evidence inside the garage that would indicate that that was his office space is there a vehicle inside the garage that makes sense for something that he drove and do you have proof that he drove that vehicle and that is his vehicle and then you would look inside you know he'd say hey just search around see if you could find any agreement between uh you know a leasee of the garage space that doesn't live in the home. And we, we would really go out of our way to make sure that, um, you know, we got the appropriate, or the easiest thing is just ask for consent, right? So you, you get an opportunity to talk with the lawyer, with the defense lawyer, or not to the person. You're not talking about the crime. You're just indicating, hey, sir, do you mind if we take a look inside, you know, in, inside the garage? Okay. And you'll get your answer there either way. If he says, like, go fuck yourself, then, you know, you got to supplement because there's stuff in there. Or if he says, yeah, absolutely, not a problem. So we're going to weave back and forth today between your experiences along yep. with exactly what's going on here. It'll just yep. kind of go naturally like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yep. But for this one, a couple things you, you said there just got my attention on some of the details from the raid they just did on, on Trump. But for one thing, it's been reported, according to his lawyers, they were not permitted in the building while he conducted – while the raid was conducted at all. They <laughs> They asked for access. They were not permitted. As one lawyer, Christina something or other, said that on record. They were also asked to turn off the security cameras, to which they said, go fuck yourself. And then the feds, they were, they were trying to fish for consent, obviously. They didn't get it. The cameras were on the whole time. Now, I'm going to guess the cameras cover most of every inch of that place. But there could be small things that don't. And so is it customary for a... Uh, Persons, uh, the subject of, of the warrants, attorneys to be on site and be denied access to following the agents around or even the person who's having the search conducted on them. Are they told they must be outside their house and they can't be there while they're doing it? And yeah. Is that legal? Yeah, that that is customary. And I'll tell you how it works and I'll tell you how it's worked in, in examples from both sides of that, right? Okay. So, um, for instance, the first thing we normally do if we're searching a business or a resident is we explain to whoever's home whoever's there, hey, for the day, you know, we're going to be doing this. We're going to be searching. It's probably going to be X a number of hours. We we think it's going to be 12 hours. We think it's going to be an overnighter. We welcome you. You're, you're welcome to stay, but here's your space. You're going to be able to sit over there in one spot. You're not detained. You can leave at any time, but we can't have you kind of wandering around for our safety. What if, they, what right? if you plant something, though? I mean... That's they're, they're, we're not going to allow somebody to follow us around, you know. And you have to assume. I, I think with everything that's being said about the FBI, and we're not planting. We're not planting evidence. We're, okay, we're not okay. going to do that. Now, right? but I, I want to make this clear too. Yeah, I think all the defund the FBI talks insane. It's bullshit. And, and yeah. like, I would just go like, ahead. De I, defund I, it. Just like I would you did. like to see yeah. Trump go away. Yeah. So this is not helping with him go away. Right. But if I am looking at this from a from a common sense perspective. You telling me that they're you're incapable of finding agents, or or well, to say like there I mean, could be look, some people who are undercover but, there. But this is the former president. Like you don't me, think they could plant something? Let, let me let me follow it up with the fact that um, we we have, for instance, I'll give you for instance, there was a sitting United States senator that I searched in the summer of two thousand and one. Okay, I searched his residence. We allowed his attorney just because we were we had a really good relationship with him. 
and um, we allowed him to kind of walk side by side with the leadership that controlled that premises for the time and those in position with the FBI that were of in leadership roles to kind of escort him through while we were doing it. Are agents also and required to wear body? I'm just thinking of this in, body cameras. Way, no, 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 no. We're not required. Okay, no. we'll come back to that. Go yeah, ahead. and we're not re, we're not required to tape interviews. So it's all our recollection that's of what. Yeah, okay. I mean, so that's Go just ahead. that's the you know that's that's the difference. Well, that's what kind of differentiates us from police. Your local PD. Got we all you know we also have never kneeled on somebody's throat. So that's a good thing. You know, yeah, um, yeah. But but bottom line is, two thousand one senator. You're talking about two thousand one senator. senator. Yeah. So so that's a case by case basis. And I made that decision personally because I knew the attorney and I knew that it would help our case. Now, unfortunately, uh, you know, a, a month later, the the twin towers went down, and uh, the U.S. attorney at the time was Mary Jo White out of the Southern District oh, yeah. in New York. She was and SEC later, right? She was, mm -hmm. yeah. And she basically came to us and said, your case is over. I'm not indicting a sitting United States Senate why the buildings are burning. So that's exactly what happened. So and you're not allowed to say who that senator was, are you? Uh, it, it was not – who was the other guy at the time? It wasn't Menendez. Um, it wasn't – Lautenberg? It wasn't Lautenberg. It wasn't uh, Corzine. Um, he had terrible hair plugs, the guy that we, we did. That narrows it down. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, <laughs> so basically that's, that's really, that's a relational kind of situation, right? So, Hey guys, if you're enjoying this episode, please be sure to share it around on social media and with your friends. Spreading the word about the podcast is the best possible thing we can do to make this thing grow and allow us to continue to get great guests like this. So thank you to each and every one of you who have been sharing around the links to the episodes each week. And thank you to all of you who are going to do it now. How do, how do I relate versus how does the next guy relate to that particular attorney, that resident that representative, I, me personally, I don't. I would not have a problem with an escorted attorney coming through with us with a copy of the search warrant. I just don't know why that's not automatically a thing. It's just not because we we value safety. That's our thing. We don't want anybody walking around behind us, around us, having an opportunity to look at things or change things or move things during the time that we need to see the things exactly where they were, how they were found, and to, to corroborate in our head, yeah, all right, that's good information that we got. Or, uh-oh, you know, it just and, and there may be a problem. You may see an uh-oh in a month. It just seems... It seems suspect to me that you'd have the you know the biggest raid in modern history, and it might be it's, over nothing, by the way. We'll get to that. But because of the person involved, it seems suspect that they tell the not, lawyers though. to fuck off. It's not. It, it truly is. That is most of the way it works, honestly. that That is most of the way it works. We don't want any interruptions or distractions. We don't want to be negotiating with an attorney, defense attorney, in the middle of a search warrant scene. We want to get our job done. Make sure everything's right. Make sure we leave the proper voucher that shows what we take, what we took exactly what we took, photograph things in place, and move out. Get out. Why? That's another question, though. Yeah. Trump came out and talked about this right after, and the thing I can't understand is why didn't he just take pictures of the vouchers that were left and release them? I, I'm not sure what he's doing. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure what the dynamic of that is or whether or not his attorneys are, are – suggesting or kind of um you know telling him not just suggesting yeah. but ordering him to keep his mouth shut but well, good good luck um you know ultimately <laughs> but 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 the thing i think the thing that bothers me more than anything and getting outside of the process itself the process is very regimented it's the way it's supposed to be it's a, a chain of evidence issue it's making sure that, you know, we, we pass it through as few people as we can, each document or each box or each computer or each hard drive, whatever we took, whatever it, whatever they were asked or, or allowed to take, um, we want to keep that as, as simple as possible. And having people wander around behind us or with us, it's not the time to negotiate. It's not the time to proffer. We don't want to hear any statements. We don't want to, we don't want to get accused of talking to someone that we're not supposed to be talking to, even asking questions or, you know, quite 
quite frankly, it's a, it's really a safety issue. Um, my, my whole, and, and we're probably going to get into this, my whole dilemma with this thing is the simplicity of other methods of getting the exact same information quicker without having any of this coverage, without having any issues um, in the, in the yes. press, without having any issues from this guy or from any other person that's in office, out of office, or thinking about running for office. So that's the other big 500-pound elephant in the room here. You have a situation where, according to the reports, Trump has been, you know, for as much of a nuisance as he can be on stuff, he has been very cooperative with this whole thing. As late as May 2022, there were FBI agents on site searching a storage room. It was at Mar-a-Lago while he was still there before he came out to New Jersey. It was agreed to by his attorneys. I said, yeah, come in, do it. He even stopped by and said hello, according to people who were there. And I think... I think that one was even from CNN, but don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure CNN reported that, though. But he also had been going back and forth behind the scenes throughout at least all of this year, but I assume before that, too, between his team and the attorneys, the state's attorneys, like the the, the national attorneys, along with, and this is the part I didn't understand, the people representing the National Archives. So, like, how does that work? Do, doesn't, like, the, the DOJ represent them i was a little confused at that i think it's a separate you know kind of branch assignment doj versus national archives and I think who are the some national sub- archives Can i you think the, that? they're basically the people that you know what's his name um oh my nicholas cage was trying to steal the the shit from in those movies so okay so yeah the, i mean these- they, they they hold they house and hold or they held responsibility for the original constitution the original declaration all those things and they they track everything back um you know when who came over in ellis island all those things that's the archives so they're basically they were reported as having concern that trump who's no longer president held documents correct that have national security implications but this is like a museum curator that's what what i don't understand here's i don't understand it either but here's my thought they wouldn't it be great and whoever's crazy mind orchestrated this. And, you know, it's not far-fetched to think it might have been his family to just calm him the fuck down from ever running from president again. Right? Whoa. Okay, so that's just, I'm going to say that, because that crossed my mind. All right? Because how the hell do you get access Whoa. to that place? How do you get access to the place? So, Yo. ultimately, so ultimately, um, wouldn't it be great to find X document sitting in a frame on his desk? Would it Would it surprise you from that guy? Fuck no. No. It, it wouldn't surprise you, right? So how much more embarrassing can it be for him, not that he gives a shit, but for his family, for his kids, for Baron, right? The youngest one is really the, the concern that I have. Um, <laughs> oh, you think Baron did it? No, I'm just saying for Baron, say, for, like for that poor kid, anxiety-ridden kid, like 6'9", yeah. 132 pounds. You know what I mean? Like there's, got, there's something to that for me. I, I, that's where I would be going with this. That's where I would be going with this. So you do think it could have been him? I absolutely do. Okay. I absolutely do think you it could be somebody to, just to just to kind of shut him up, you know, just to kind of shut up the fact. No, no, I, I listened to it, but I wanted to talk about it later because it okay. crossed my mind. Okay. All right? Okay. So ultimately, um, I think they left no stone unturned whoever did this, whether it be who everybody believes it is, maybe it's his own party, and maybe it's his family. I think that's the three kind of buckets you need to spend your time looking at. The, the, Each of those. The the thing that blows my mind, though, is the same exact point we talked about right at the beginning of this, which is that this has the opposite effect. If they, I always say this. Maybe. If they, if, maybe. Maybe. Actually, that's fair. You, yeah. it, it could go either way. You, we don't know how this is going to turn out. But like, I look at that 2015-2016 playbook and what they did, and I go back. I was saying this right when it happened. After the whole January 6th debacle and all the bullshit he pulled there. They gave him the greatest present ever by banning him from the social media platforms, making and, – and it was a big deal what went down and everything, but then trying to make this whole other thing out of it, all these other people that might not even have anything to do with it, overplaying some of it. And I'm like, you are giving him – you're making his message ring true. His message is that the state hates you and they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna come against anyone who's from the outside. And this is playing right into his playbook. Playing into his hands. His hands. His, right. His narcissistic, crazy hands. Yes. Right? Play who's going to run for president. 
Right, but the party's the party isn't looking at that favorably. You know, they're preparing. They're preparing. Have you have you heard what they're saying? And because it's the same do, nuts. I can name the people in New Jersey who are going to keep giving millions of dollars to his campaign and his PAC. Sure, because they can't help themselves because they think that makes America better and great again. But look what crazy! He did, look what he did. He and DeSantis have been having friction going at it because they're like you know the ones who are going to run against each other. And this situation was now so bad what was created that DeSantis had to come out and give a full throated. And I mean, I guess it's. Fair for coming from his political end of things, give a full throated. This is a banana republic. You yeah, know, this well, is insane. Of course, so it makes him. It makes he's got every, to. He's, yes. he's got to get the nomination. So now, right? No, but now he's his favorables in Florida. There's been some polling that's been done in the immediate aftermath that says like, oh, now it's starting to flip again, and now people are liking Trump. And there's a lot of time to go for sure, but I could see this. Like I just have looked at it like they love this. They love having this guy cause chaos, and yeah. they really just and want he him loves, around. He loves it. Yes, he, he does. loves having chaos. So, so that's. But my thought is, yeah. Do I think it, it, there's a chance it's an inside job? But it's an inside job, in my opinion, to shut him the fuck up and get him off of the stage for family pur- for family Good reasons luck. and purposes. Right. Good, Good luck. luck. Good luck. But it's going to be difficult for him to do what he thinks he's going to be able to do. Period. Why is that? Eh, I don't know. It's just just a sense I get. Listen, we got another guy in the White House who can't figure out if you fucking shake shook your hand, right. the other hand. The other, that guy's completely one million percent fucking senile, and he's going to cause a major war here in the next six months if if we're not careful. Period. Period. End of discussion. He's got no place being there. The administration has no place being there. But that just tells you. That just tells you how much Trump is hated. To put yeah. that bozo fucking in there. So, they can so hate I have him, no. But they can hate him, but love. Profit I hate everybody. At the like, same time. Yeah, I, I understood. Right? I hate. I hate everybody. The FBI. You know, whatever people are accusing them of being of weaponizing the FBI. No, that that's not particularly the case. The bottom line is, we fucking ninety nine point nine percent of us follow the evidence, right? And we we have distrust for everybody, especially in the political branch that we meet. Period. I have distrust until you prove it otherwise. I've Good. worked it. I've done it. Yeah. You know? And, and and unfortunately, I think I've said this before, I'm relieved finally here almost four years, more than four years later after retirement, I'm finally relieved to meet someone and not know every everything about them. I know some things because I wouldn't be doing my job if I right. went to Manhattan and, and went into an office and didn't know about two or three guys. I need to know something because I also, it, it's also important for my business to be able to know about things. But at this point, like... It's just it it's it's off the charts that people would sit and accuse the FBI of being weaponized. Off the Why? fucking charts. Why? Just is. We we don't have that juice. We don't have the juice to be able to say we're gonna fuck this guy over because that's what we're gonna do. No, it's not the case. It's DOJ. It's gar it's that fucking idiot AG. That's who it is. Now did Period. He, he's now getting the, he's getting weaponized because he doesn't even know what's going on. There's another question though. Yeah. There's been conflicting reports. I even checked right before we went on because, by yeah. the way, we're recording this. By the on, way, I'm pissed, off, I'm pissed off about this, as you could tell. I, 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 I you came in ready to yeah. go today. I'm yeah, raging. I, I'm I raging. It. I even spilled my coffee all over my fucking lap. Nice, yeah. nice. And, well, no one sees because it's below table, but no, but it's burning. Uh, but I'm okay. Oh, okay. But, well, it's, yeah. it's not burning on a bad part, right? No. Okay. Just on, right, just, just on sure. my thigh. Just making sure. Yeah. But. There's been conflicting reports, but we're recording this on Wednesday. This, this podcast is going to come out on Monday or Tuesday, so there will be more information out. But I've seen different things that seem to like beat around the bush as to whether or not Garland was aware of this raid or had to sign off on it himself. My first thought of, of course he fucking was. At the same time, I do kind of wonder, I'm like, Hundred percent. You know, tinfoil hat on though. Could this have been something that didn't go past him? Hundred percent. And here's here's something I want to. Okay. This is a good time to talk about this. So in my entire career, I worked a portion of it in the unit, public corruption unit, right? Which is any and all, uh, you know, um, official anybody in official capacity, whether appointed or elected, who was utilizing their position in return for X, whatever X was, money, barter, whatever that particular thing was, right? Um, along the way, the one rule that was constantly reminded of was in place forever and was something that you had to take into consideration with timing anytime you were either going to interview a person, issue a subpoena in any form or fashion 
for a politician or their trust account, anything along those lines. Interviews were even, like I said, were even more important. Like, do not, you are not allowed to go talk to X within X amount of days from an election. Mm. They would not allow you because you would be responsible then potentially for uh, affecting that election. And that's why they got affecting and influencing. Correct. Okay. Well, yeah, because he decided to to not just pass evidence along, but to actually make the prosecutorial decisions. Right. Bozo. Yeah, Sammy the Bull, Jim, you fucking asshole. But anyway, <laughs> um, so if you look at this particular case, for instance, if I wanted to subpoena um, the attorney's trust account who was representing a senator, a sitting senator in the United States Senate, I would have to get permission from the attorney general, not from the DAG, not from this guy. The attorney general would have to say authorized. Mm. I did it once. I know the procedure. I know how long it takes. I know how they scrutinize every single word you say, every single word you write. They look at the timing of it. Are we up against an election cycle? Is there money? What's the cycle? Is it the primary? Is it the general? What's the packs look like? That's that's the that's the amount of time that it takes. Dumb question, to go real through. quick, just to be sure. Yeah, is this before or after you've received the written okay from the judge? Well, we'll, subpoena, we'll get to the judge. Right, so, but. so subpoena wise, let's remove it even from search warrant. Okay, think about just subpoenas. Okay. Which can be issued by a, a, an assistant United States athir- attorney with um, a purely a conversation where I would go over and say, hey, listen, uh, you know, so-and-so, I've got reason to believe that this person has been predicated to have accepted X in return for Y. Can I subpoena their credit reports? And we would go through a half-hour discussion on why credit reports were going to be important and then immediately say, okay, it's so-and-so. When is the next election election cycle for this particular person? Um, what kind of fundraising is going on? How much money have they raised? Where do they hold their fundraisers? Who's some of their allies in the party? Who's some of the allies in the opposite or some of the uh, opponents in the other party? Who are they running against? That's the level for a credit report subpoena. A credit report. A credit report subpoena to just indicate what accounts are up. What accounts? I have one at, uh, you know, Citibank. I have one at USAA. I have one at Bank of America. Just to look at their financials. Just to look at, just just to get credit reports so I could subpoena the financials. Hmm. So if you think about that level right now, we basically, that's a subpoena. That's nothing. That's meaningless, right? If you think about the level it takes to now get a search warrant, by the way, I think there's a, there's a document called a subpoena forthwith, all right? That's an, that's why I don't understand why you wouldn't just utilize that, and that is a simple procedure, okay? Two agents, maybe three agents, go to the residents, or most importantly and more importantly, what would have happened is they would have went to the attorney's office at 930 on that day with the subpoena and said, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Attorney, we're going to serve this today on Mr. Trump's residence, Okay. These are the documents we're looking for. We want no communi- and it was one-on-one. We're going to we want no communication between you and him. All right, would you come with us please? Accompany mm. us to the residence. We are not le- us three are not leaving this residence. No one else is coming. Not leaving this residence until these documents are produced or explained why they're not present. Right? Okay. Once that happens, we we have an understanding. Let's just say Six of the nine things are not produced. We don't know where they are, whatever. Then there's a search warrant that's actually waiting and ready to be signed, ready to be sworn out. Oh, so this, now we come okay, in full force. Okay. Right? So why why was there a step? And there's no, there's nothing that we believe, there's no evidence that, that says that that happened that way. It doesn't always happen, but it's an easier way to do it if you're not looking, if you don't have a political agenda or you're not trying to stop something from yeah, happening in the election cycle. And that's all this is. It's an election. It's it's a, it's basically a diversion of this election cycle. Well, they also did it. Apparently, there's some sort of. I I assume it's an unwritten rule of like the 90 days out mm-hmm. within which again yeah come, come 90 broke, days and that was part of the issue there. Correct. Which, by the way, it's fair, even longer than that fair, we, conservatively. Well, 
either way, like the, what I've been reading is that they say 90 days. 90 this, is the rule, written rule. This search was conducted approximately, I read like 91 or 92 days before the, this Tuesday that tells in you, November. That tells you the thought process. Right? So there they, it is. they timed it up against that. But what you're just saying in that past response is that if – you are getting what appears to be, air quotes there, cooperation between a subject of an investigation, their attorneys, or a combination thereof. And you're having meetings and you're not, to use your nine examples, like your nine things example, they're only giving you six or they're only giving you three or whatever. Then you can go to the search warrant. Yes. Which would, in this case, support potentially a theory that on behalf of the National Archives and in the interest of national security – the FBI agents or DOJ attorneys, representatives, whoever it was throughout the process involved had been having these meetings, had been going on site, had been collecting some documents and didn't get everything they needed. And therefore, they weren't – they believe they warranted a search. Now, here's the question. If you only – in your example, got six out of nine things or three out of nine things, would you need to go right to the search warrant or could you go back to them and say – You've only given us three or six out of the nine things. We need to come in now and meet today and meet with you so yes. that we make it's sure. Ne- yes, it's a negotiation. Exactly. Right. So why didn't they do that? Keep here? an open line of communication, right? And just say, hey, we've been working so well together. Thank you so much for the information you've provided. Listen, so we why feel didn't like they we do didn't that get here. That's what I want to know. That's mm. what I want to know. Okay. So, so that is not practice. That is not the way it works to say, okay, the, the you know, Listen, the only time that we would hold a search warrant hold a search warrant and not execute it even though we're prepared to execute it would be what we call an approach, right? So for instance, um I want to see if you're going to cooperate. But mm-hmm. I have a search warrant for your property. But if you now what what what's the harm if I serve that search warrant and have FBI all over here? People are going to start looking. The news is going to show up. Your neighbors are going to call the police. The police are going to call their contacts, and you're blown. There's nothing you could do to help me out if you wanted to cooperate. So I F you over. I fuck you over, right? I'm like, fuck you, man. You know what? You know, I don't even want you to cooperate. That's when that's when you know you got a problem, right? But if I walk in here, just to, two of us walk in dressed down and knock on the door, Julian, can I talk to you for a couple? Listen, we think this is what you're doing, man. We, we're pretty sure this is what you're doing, but you can help yourself. You know, and here's how you can help yourself. We, we don't want to serve the warrant. We don't want to serve the warrant and make a big scene unless I want to, to make a point, unless I want people to say, holy cow, what Julian was doing, you shouldn't do. Period. So in this particular instance, if I'm getting, if I have an open line with the people who can produce the documents or the evidence that I need, I should never have to go to search warrant in that form or fashion, especially especially with like, how I, what was there, a couple hundred agents there? cars they had the coast guard out on the boats i mean come on man you know like that is just a fuck this guy screw him the agents you know. were in plain clothes though yeah <laughs> plain clothes with huge fbi jackets on yeah, and badges yeah. and secret service was here. I, I i got a kick out of the fact that so here's another question we're together you just right? i forgot about that so allegedly how this went down is that I've seen reports that said 15 minutes. I've seen other reports that don't give a specified time. So we'll say shortly before, same day, mm-hmm. FBI mm-hmm. calls Secret Service because the former president is protected by Secret Service and gives them a heads up. We're coming. Yeah. Please pr- stand down. Appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The Secret Service in that situation, they work for Trump, but they really work for the government and they're contracted via the government and subsidized to work for Trump. So- they don't say anything to him. They don't give him a heads up. They're legally qualified or obligated not to do that. And the reason the FBI waits till the last minute, I'm guessing, is in case there is a leak or something. They don't right. want that. Okay. When that search is going down, did they – I haven't seen any reports that say whether or not the – maybe I just missed it, but whether or not the Secret Service agents were also ordered out of the house. But, you know, are they conducting the search – are there situations yeah. where they conduct the search with them? Or help them out. Like I would doubt we would want to put those people on the spot, right? Because they got to come back to the residence because they're assigned. That's a team that's actually assigned to former yes. presidents. Yes, and it's so they're they're going to be people that they know, you know, that he knows. And I would doubt that they, we we would put them in that situation. It's kind of the same reason why we wait to the last minute to call them because we don't want to put them in a situation where they're being asked. 
what's going on, what's going on as they're approaching, you know, what's happening. Um, right. You know, because you can see the you can see demeanor shift. It's the same reason why we don't call. If I were coming here, um, you know, to arrest you or to execute a search warrant, I'm not going to call Mullica Hill. I'm not going to call the police department. You know, the day before and say, "Hey, man, we're coming," because I don't want to put anybody in a position where they can be questioned down the line. Mm. Let's say you looked out the window and, "Hey, wait a minute," or just in your mind said, "I think something's going on." You know, then who are we going to go to? Hey, we gave you the information. You, we got to believe you turned it over. Yeah, right? I didn't have a huge problem with that. I just yeah. wanted to know what the yeah, and was. and that's kind of the. I, I would think they would remove. They would they would welcome to stay on site, obviously, because they still have to protect the president. Uh, you know, regardless of what's happening, it's still their only job is to protect his safety and his life. Well, in that case, he's not there presently. But that was the other thing. They're still there because it's his residence. Correct. So they have to protect. Yeah. His Executive interest. Protection 101. Okay. You know, Got they're going to stay there, make sure there's no break-ins, make sure there's nobody looking around. Um, so they're, you know, subsidized security force. Um, but, you know, you know, my thought is there were other ways to do this better, more efficiently, and without – if all it was about was collecting this evidence, that's what it really was about. There's other ways to do this. Okay. And they're much easier – they're much more cost effective. I can't imagine what the bill for some of the overtime for the task force officers that were on that search that the government's <laughs> going to have to pay. Yeah, we don't think about this, but this no. kind of stuff, this shit adds up. I mean, it's as opposed to sending three active FBI agents to do that who are getting paid salary and doesn't matter if they work five minutes and do Wordle for an hour or they work 60 hours. They're getting the same, you know, 172 5, you know 55998 that's it now let's let's get into the permission that happened for this okay so a couple things first of all the agents who were a part of the raid were from the FBI's southern florida office I would, and yeah. also it was two offices, offices them and i don't know if it was my it just said southern florida Has to be the one miami, i read but yeah. probably miami Either way, like South Florida. Yeah. And also the D.C. Bureau. So they yeah. flew in some public, guys. Public integrity. Okay. That's the unit. So this is a normal, I assume this is a very normal type deal where you have multiple offices working on one raid based on expertise or location of the investigation. Or task forcing together. Like we, we used to have, during the time that we had some big issues in the 90s with politicians, we the, the Bureau actually fo uh, formed a campaign finance task force. To kind of take a look at who was kind of, you know, getting um, a little sloppy with their campaign finance tactics and or um, documentation. Oh, so, getting sloppy? Yeah. No. <laughs> so it's the same kind of deal here. There's probably a team that has senior public corruption agents who come together in D.C. for an extended TDY, a temporary duty, maybe six months, nine months, whatever. And here's their only case. Go. You know. Okay. Um, they did that. In the past, they did it with in the Hillary investigation. You know, they did they did five or six teams of five or six agents. Which, by the way, we'll come back to as well because you can't talk about the specifics of the Hillary yeah. investigation. Right. But you were involved in that yes. investigation yes. right yeah. at the yes. end of your career, and yes. you left afterward. And that was really that was a landmark investigation towards public sentiment of the FBI and where we're at, which is now, by the way. This is this is right left right left right left right left. It's, it's just nuts what's going it's on. It's a shame for the rank and file. Yes, it's a shame for a lot of the and, people. And the lack, the press doesn't under, even understand the, the the rank how the bureau is set up. I saw some report on one of the one of the cable networks, and basically they're talking. This guy's talking, and he's like, "Yeah, it's a damn shame because the rank and file agents are so good, but all of the leadership and management." His is a is our political appointees wrong? What wrong? The FBI director alone alone is a political appointee. Yes, that's it. Period. Right? No one else. The deputy director comes up through the ranks. Him on down. There's 13 that surround that director. Yeah, if 13. your name when you were named like special agent in charge, that's that's done through one it, of the managers at the central office. It goes right? through a whole process. It's got nothing to do with anything. Okay. You know. And that's, it's a, that's an important. We don't bring we don't bring a, a person in and say, "Hey, um, we really like what you're doing on the outside. You're a hell of a lawyer. Uh, you're going to take over the Buffalo office." No, fuck no. Right, and you and, know, and people also have to know. There's just because one political guy, the the guy whose name and, and in Chris this case, isn't going to engage. He's not going to engage. He's not going to do it. He was important. He was appointed by Trump. Yep. Right. 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 So after he fired Cohen. Yeah. 
Thanks. Always got to get that in. Yeah. But, like, that's the other thing. I know from speaking to you on things you've talked about on the record here and then things you can't talk about on the record, when cases go down and don't get made or even when they get made once in a while and, and off chances, like, that doesn't mean all the agents are on board with that. In fact, it can no. usually mean that they're all against it. But one asshole is like, oh, fuck it. We're doing it, right? And so what I do recognize is even though the stakes are at the highest, you are always going to have human error. It's just a part of it. When it could occur, we don't know what's going on here, but when it could, we know what it looks like. When it could occur on something like this, it's a mountain out of a molehill if there ever was one. Absolutely. That's why we're talking about it. Absolutely. But like when, when we're talking about the the permission, which we touched on a little bit ago as far as like when you were going through the subpoenas and mm-hmm. and the warrants and, and how some of that works at like internally, the judge though, because this was a warrant, I think his name's Reinhardt. In, That's right. Yeah, Reinhardt. In yep. South Florida. Yeah, so, I want to say he was he was a federal prosecutor and he was a Florida assistant attorney general too, I think. I think. I don't so know. So he was he was a prosecutor who flipped over to defense side, which is normal. Yep. And, you know, they they really don't like someone at the office needs to check this stuff before they do it. They really got to look at this stuff because they open themselves up to natural questioning when you go to a judge who defended all of Epstein's lieutenants in court as a defense attorney. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, how many judges are down there? Go get a different judge. You know, so the central question I have is, first of all, how do they determine who the judge is? Are there certain judges, like, is it always magistrate judges that have to do this? Like, are there judges who are on the same court who are not qualified, but others are? Like, how does this work? Yeah, magistrates are appointed for a term. They're not I don't know what I think it's five years maybe, and a lot and of them if, aren't presidential appointees. No, right? no, yeah. and they get they the potential is to get elevated to a district court judge or an appeals court judge. That's the goal when you become a magistrate, and most most of them happen that way. Most of that happens. So magistrate judges are on a, a schedule. I mean, it's a rotational schedule. So you're on you know every third week of the month I'm on every fourth week of the month and that's how it goes it doesn't matter what type of case it is it doesn't matter if it's a search warrant application a title three application um, you know uh, an initial appearance um, you know a, a subpoena uh, discussion whatever that is that magistrate court judge you know I know if I'm um, if I'm a good federal prosecutor and I'm paying attention to my cases uh, oh you know what I want Reinhardt this week and, it, and nothing sinister about it. I just get along better with him. So if I go to present, you know, a, a search warrant application and he and I kind of see eye to eye on different things, he's not going to give me as much shit as maybe Smith will give me. And that that's a, that's human, right? So you're saying you have one in, in your case, you're in office X in state. Y. You know, you have one, you only have one judge's office you can go to and it rotates wh- who the judge is. You can't choose yeah. another judge's no. office. District court of New Jersey has a magistrate list and it's rotated. So does so it however matter? However many they are, and and they do their own. Listen, once you gain, once you get a case, this judge Reinhardt, he'll be with this case for the rest of his time. Well, that's promising. So he'll issue every single order or whatever until it moves to the level of indictment. Right. So then, then a district court would take over. Does it matter? Mm-hmm. Here's another because this one again, it's like a national case, but it's in Florida where they're doing it. Since it was the D.C. office and the Florida office working on it, and they both have an interest in the case. Could they have gone to the magistrate judge in D.C., whoever that is, as opposed to the Florida one, even though the raid was in Florida? No. They're going to go to the to the actual venue from where the raid or the search warrant is going to take place. However, you're going to have federal prosecutors assigned to that task force, that public integrity task force, that are going to be arguing or going to be preparing or at least have a say in the preparation of that affidavit for that search warrant. So you, you're not going to have the choice to go yeah. to a D.C. Okay. or a Florida guy, but you will have people that are from D.C. that are coming down to argue or to prepare this search warrant application. So that's that's the that's kind of the and, – and, hey, they may even – I don't know. It used to be where public – you know whether it be public integrity seg- section or the campaign finance task force attorneys, federal prosecutors, would, would take over. They would, they would have – they would be able to, to take you off the case and say, hey, look, you can work with me, but – I'm making the calls on this. Why are we just so close to everything, all this stuff, all politics now? Like, you know, even even with Trump, look at some of his record on stuff. 
somehow everything's tied to Epstein. I don't understand it. And I, I you know, that makes sense to me. I, I appreciate that explanation. So now it's like, well, yeah, technically that was just the guy th- that was who they had to go to. That's the office they have to go to. That was the guy who was on that week, whatever. But like, all right. But I can know, wait till next week. Right. Or like, let's say that 90 day rule was a real thing. And they're like, all right, we don't want to wait till next week. Why didn't they do it the goddamn week before? Like, you're telling me they can't check that? This dude represented Sarah Kellen. He represented the pilots who oh, flew these people around the y- world. You know they talked. You know that's known. You, you know everything about your judges. All right, so... When, when I used to go in and know I was, um, you know, going before the grand jury and should we indict that day, it was going to be judge so-and-so, magistrate so-and-so, I would be either, at, don't worry about it, you know, I'm, I'm good with what I know right now. We'll answer questions later if there need be. Or, man, I better I better be ready because there's a chance that this guy will question me, you know, significantly about a great affidavit. So it's all in, you know, it's definitely, you know, you know your, I guess, your client. Well, it's not really a client. You know, you know the person that's making the decision on your case. And it's very easy for me to say... To the federal prosecutor, hey man, go with Reinhardt because I just get along. It's as simple as that. I get along better with him. He's not an asshole. And no one does a background check. Boop, boop, boop. No, they Defended. know. No, they know. They know, and yeah, they still but do that's it. That's the guy. That's, those are the guys that are in the rotation. That's why I'm saying they're yeah. trying to drive people right in this fucking guy's arms because they make it look bad. Yeah, they make it look as bad as possible. I mean, if you listen, I I listened this morning to left wing media and right wing media. I think I listened to. Pod Save the World, which is like Ben Rhodes' podcast, yeah. and then I listen to, what's his name, the Tim Pool guy. Okay. And of course, they're saying opposite shit. But like, I'm listening to, in this case, who's on the defensive, the right side. Like, the left says kind of exactly what I expect them to say, and then the right side does too, in this case, incredulously, and they're, I think that's the right word there, essentially, like... They're pointing out that this guy is, is Ty Depstein. Oh, here's another one. And I can't sit here and be like, no, that's that's not fair. It doesn't really matter. I mean, like, it just seems like even if people now know that, like, that was the guy who was on that week, still, the fact that the idea that the government doesn't know this stuff and then, you know, could easily avoid that and doesn't is not reassuring for people who look at this and go, you know, there there are, there are forces at play that are that are pulling the strings and, and making decisions. It's for a everybody. shit show, bro. It's a circus. This was a circus that there was no need except to make a circus out of it. The actual, the actual mission, the actual solution had nothing to do with with the circus. You know, what was, do you mean? So the mission is to get the documents, to get the evidence. If that's really the mission, it's not to it's not to ma- have a shit show on an island in Florida with people driving in boats and having guns and running in and hundreds of cars. That's not what it is. So. That's how you got to look at it. Simply, what what is the circ? Who caused the circus and why? And there's a couple different things we could think about. You know, and what are those things? Well, I mean, I think the one obviously is is the left, right? Wanted to wanted to do this. The other one is, and I, I didn't even think about your point, but I but I'll address it. The other thing is in the the family to shut it down because they just didn't think it was healthy for him to be, and they can't control him. So they didn't think it was healthy for him to be the president again or run for president again. Who knows why? I don't know if it's interest. I don't know if it's Kushner's again showing up, you know, going to be in the target. I don't know. He if doesn't want those deals getting looked at. Hell no. So so my, my point is those two, but I didn't even think about your point, which is um, them themselves. You know, let's run in it and we can, we can, we can, they had that commercial ready pretty fucking quick. Yeah, they Three did. Three and a half minutes. They did. So who knows? You know, who knows? There, there's a bunch of different things, but... Bottom line, if the mission was purely to get, to garner this evidence that was part of a crime, which I'm really hoping, I don't think we'll ever be able to see the full warrant, um, it'll be redacted. But if it's just, I, I just want to know what- Why would it be redacted? Well, I mean, they're definitely going to not, they're not going to want you to know who, which source it, what sources provided what information or any of that shit. They oh, might, the wa- right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. The, the affidavit, the affidavit. Not, not, yeah, what, not they what they left they Trump. Not what they took. But not the what they aff- left Trump. Correct, you're saying. correct. Okay, got it. But, but, you know, my thought, my thought is if that was the mission and, and the crimes that are in play are one, two, and three- and this evidence was supposed to be able to prove each prong of those particular crimes, right? Then why did it have to be a shit show like it was? Why couldn't it just be, hey, let's 
get this information. I'm sure the negotiations that are going on with these three and four thousand dollar an hour attorneys, you know, it wouldn't have been hard to get what you needed no. unless you wanted to put a circus on. And that's what they did. They threw a circus and everybody showed up. And now, I mean, they were looking through Melania's panties and everything, too. Like, all the stuff you say about a proper search and all that and doing it all by the book, I'll believe you that a lot of it was yeah. done in, in that way for, like, on your but watch. But there's fun but to be had. It's levity, man. So you're going to be like, hey, look at the dildo I found in <laughs> Melania's. Who knows? But that's what Who I'm knows? saying. You know, I mean, that 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 happens. The stakes on this are so high. Yep. There will be a lot of outs. You oh, know, 100%. The best attorneys are working on this, like 100%. You said. 100%. So, like, Listen, we used to go in. We used to go in. I did this. I did this one warrant years and years and years ago, and it was an organized crime family. Hey. Hey. You know, we went up, we searched the house, and there was a little detached apartment that the mobster's son lived in, probably in the mid-20s. His kid was in the mid-20s, mid-20s. And in it, we go in to search. We had the information. Right. So there was a couple of really good-looking daughters, and, of course, guys were going in trying to find dildos and pictures, <laughs> and they did. They weren't disappointed. Problem was the son... <laughs> The son had bigger dildos than the fucking daughters. <laughs> that was the problem. And he had, I'll never forget, he had a hash pipe that was in the shape of a dick. So he was smoking his hat, his his pot through that thing. And, you know, that's just levity for us, right? So you want to know? You, you know what flipped the mobster? That. We went back in and said, hey, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, do a little write up on this with regards to your son's, you know, sexual this is wrong as shit, but hey, you use whatever you can. And he goes, Listen, I'll give you whatever you want. Just don't let anybody know. They'll kill me. Holy yeah. shit. Yep. Yep. So that was it. Was that so, a big name guy? Yeah, big name guy. Big name guy. Yeah. Big name guy. So at the end of the day, that's kind of what we're looking. You know, we'll exploit what we can because it's legal to exploit that stuff. But at this at this one's gonna be watched like a son of a bitch. So why would I why would I put my guy's out there for a circus, right? Unless I was basically in bed. Well, I hate to say that. But why, why would I put no, my guys? Go ahead. Well, I mean, that's what that's how the left is looking. You know, basically the left, I'm looking at the left as just that. You know, whatever it takes to get this guy to not run for president. That's what this is. And by and the, the way, family, whatever it takes to get this guy not to run for office. One place where the left does, the party. where the left has an argument here. Yeah. It's a little different. Where the left has an argument, at least on like the semantics, forget how whatever the facts on, on these situations are, and you would actually know some of them for whatever, but like they look at the Hillary Clinton thing and they look at Trump yelling lock her up and everything, and then they look at Comey coming in and causing the whole problem, and they're like, all right, well, tit for tat. I, hey, I, I'm not saying it's equal, but I get that. Well, well you know, look at, look at what's been done to try to remove him from having an opportunity to yes. be. To run again, the impeachment, right? That that whole disaster across the board for the country, you know, for the country in yes. general, you know. Yes. Then the January sixth hearings and that whole sideshow, you know. Even I mean, even went as far as if you watch the HBO. I don't know if you've watched the HBO special on that day. It's like an hour and a half, and it's it's disturbing in light of how they actually edited that thing how, to make it mean? look like to make it look like you know every. Every Capitol policeman and every other person was was in fear for their life. Now, yeah. there was some shit that happened. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And it was scary. And I would have been scared, too, being there. But at the same time, you can manufacture... We've talked about this before. The press can do whatever they want to manufacture things to make it look any way they want it to look. And we see that every day I don't, on the I, news, I, I right? Don't, I don't disagree with you at yeah. all on that. And but but I, they tried and tried on this guy and nothing happened, right? So this is, this, yes. is step, this is step three. This is the third or fourth or fifth look at like this. Seventh, eighth, right. ninth. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know... I just don't know. It crosses my mind that if I had a narcissistic father that, in fact, wouldn't listen to anything I had to say, and it was in the best interest of my family and maybe even the country to have him have to step down and not run, who knows? I don't know. I don't know what that would look like. You can't, there's no fucking way to describe what's inside that place unless you've made a good point. And I would, this would never happen in a million years. Secret Service guys hold shit. They go to the grave with shit that happened. Just look at the Clinton White House. You know what I mean? <laughs> so bottom line or any other White House, the Kennedy White House, right? So, I mean, Kennedy if you look like a good time. 
Yeah. Oh my God. He was a good Swimming time. laps. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> but th- no wonder why his back hurts so much. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, if you think about those things, you can almost in your head rationalize this from several different approaches. Not almost. You can. You can. You can make an argument for several different approaches, what you believe, what you don't believe, and then kind of orchestrate it to your point of view. That's life. Absolutely. That's the way it goes, right? Absolutely. But the process yeah. is the process, and they had an opportunity to, to um, for a much less circus-like process, and they chose not to do it. Someone chose not to do that. Well, the, the other... the. In an, in an election cycle. The, in an election cycle. Period. In, a, in, in the middle of this is the burning question around the criminality that's at play here or questionably at play. It's like the way – and I don't know if this is true at all, but I'm saying like when I read this as it developed and I read what they were doing, the way it sounds to me or the way some of the reports have been making it sound – and this is from everywhere – from the New York Times to Fox News. I've read everything. And just the vibe I get, which could mean nothing, is that this what they're not really going for a crime. They wanted the search warrant so that they could get anything that was left just in case. And then it's back. And then they know he it would never go to court because he'd be able to argue all the semantics and whatever. But now, and I'm saying this is the this is the way they're going at it in air quotes, right? But now at least, okay, he has no documents. We know it. We're good. Let's move on. But what happens in the middle is the headline. And the headline is FBI raids Trump. And there's no way they didn't know that was going to be the thing. Correct. So like we may not even be talking about something that's like criminal here, but they still did a raid. Right, have you ever seen FBI raids happen where it's it is more to and I'm going to pull up a quote while you're talking because there's an exact quote that explains this better than I just did but like that was pertained to crossing the T's and dotting the I's to make sure something was done as opposed to actively trying to actually make a case that's going to go to court and put one put someone in jail um so no, you know on on the leverage side of the house on the leverage side of the house, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I think we talked about that a little bit before. So in order to garner your cooperation, I may prepare a search warrant based on factual information that I know of things that are in your house, all based on source information, all based on um, cooperators and interviews and things we've done along the way. So yeah, I may, in fact, prepare a search warrant that I never that I never execute. Mm. That that would be probably that would be as close to that situation as I can possibly imagine from my experience. And we did that several, several times. You know, like I said, hey, listen, if you don't cooperate, because we know you can and we know and we would give them very specific details on what we wanted them to do with what people. Listen, I know you're I know you can talk to John right now on the phone, and I know that this is the things that you did with him along the way. And here's how we know. And we play them tapes of themselves talking to John about it, you know. Okay, now from another from another source, you know. And at that point, listen, if you don't cooperate and you don't sign a cooperation agreement to help us with this and help yourself, we're going to execute this search warrant. And then there's no opportunity for you to do this. We're going to either execute it quietly in the hopes that halfway through it you'll say, "Oh shit, they found X. I thought I could get away with it." You know, and the most powerful tool is the, having the IRS there too, and that's the other thing I thought about with this particular incident. You know, were they on site? I'm sure. I don't know that for a fact, but there's not many federal search warrants on public officials and their homes well, that the IRS are not there. And they just added like eighty-seven thousand new agents the other day. They're they're not they're not helping themselves here. They're not helping themselves. You know, so Ugh. so it's kind of like, you know. That, to me, is just another attempt to dirty that world up, to dirty the Trump world up so that before the midterms, because I think the handwriting's on the wall that it's going to be a harsh midterm for the left. Um, I'm back to thinking that again. Yep, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it went back and forth, but They've it's going to be- The right's been trying to blow it, but yeah, then the left tries trying to, blow to blow it harder. Correct. It's nuts. So it's kind of like- this is a last ditch attempt to kind of 
get it at least on a level playing field so that at least there's an opportunity to maybe stay rock steady. Um, so that's the kinds of things that go through my head because I, and also the other side of this is there, there's two, there's two dynamics that enter into this, right? So the, to prepare a search warrant is hard. It's a lot. It's what, a lot of work. In, what goes into that? I mean, it is just, you know, it's just all of, all of your investigative steps along the way. And this isn't, this is something that's probably been going on for quite some time, obviously. How lo- Okay, there's a question. How long do you, in your experience, yeah. for something that we can broadly see, at mm-hmm. least the scope of what this mm-hmm. was, all the agents, the different offices, two different offices, the DOJ directly involved, like actively, stuff like that, how long would it take from decision point of let's get a search warrant together to executing the search warrant? Would something like this normally? I go? think it could take anywhere from four to six months. Holy shit! Yeah, just because you've got so much to to verify and corroborate along the way, you're trying to keep it tight until the last minute. Because obviously, the more people who know about it, the more chance there are than them talking to somebody that they shouldn't, that they didn't know that they shouldn't talk to, but they're thinking they're helping, and and so you keep it very tight on the need to know what until are all the day the, of the execution. What are all the steps to it? Well, I mean. You start to draft based on what the criminal statute violations are. So if it's, you know, for instance, in a, um, you know, in a public corruption type case, there might be, um, what is it called? Um, fraud of honest services charge, which is a mail fraud statute. So basically saying the public's entitled to this service, an honest service from a, a sitting politician, but they were violated because he did something it wasn't he or she did something they weren't supposed to do. So then you take that and, and give all the examples of how that was violated based on the information you've already garnered and what you think could be in the home or in the office or wherever in a room. We've done search ones on rooms, on desks, on one desk, you know, on a filing cabinet, you know? And you also need a you separate search warrants for any computers too. It needs to be a separate search warrant, separate piece of paper that indicates why that digital form of evidence is going to be present and why it would be helpful for you to have that information. So there's all kinds of descriptions and paperwork, oh. and then you need that. That's where you were talking about the sourcing to be able sourcing to get all and of it. The freshness and the, um, you, you know, and, and, and it needs to lay out like a story for that judge. So you're a case maker. Let's mm-hmm. say you're even, I'll give you a high rank, like you were towards the end of your career, like mm-hmm. special agent in charge. How many hands does that have to go through between you and, in this case, Merrick Garland before? So it needs, needs like? to reach the top level of the United States Attorney's Office in my district. So, for instance, that would be um, me discussing it with, as an agent, as a case agent. Me and my partner discussing that with our immediate supervisor, who would be, um, you know, basically like a like a platoon leader, like a frontline um, supervisor, who would then take it to his boss, who is an assistant special agent in charge of the office, uh, who would review it and come back with. Que- and all these are coming back with questions, and hey, you need to do, you need to do, you need to do. In the meantime, while that's happening, contemporaneously, United States Attorney's Office, who is handling the legal side and the assistant United States attorney and the agent, the case agent, they're working together. So Mm. they're going up the same chain. It doesn't go like all the way up the FBI and then all the way back down to the lowest level. It's just United States attorney's office. Right. So, so as they reach the level of probably um, what we call in, in U S attorney's office, like the chief of special prosecutions who handles all of the, public corruption cases. As it reaches that level and as it reaches the special agent in charge level, they come together, right? And they present that to the next, their bosses in in DOJ, who might be uh, section chief DOJ of public, um, you know, either public corruption or um, what did I say before? Um, anyway, whatever whatever the level is that it, that. The, I guess the U.S. attorney, not the U.S. attorney, but the attorney general has signified, here's the chain of command. Okay. Here's how I want it to go. And ultimately, it gets to that level of the AG, who I'm sure, now I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure in this kind of case, he's going to have to discuss that in the White House. He's going to have to brief that, I would think. I would think in some form or fashion, whether it be the chief of staff or whether it be someone that's got to be in the, on the know. I, I would think. I don't know that that's the case, but 
I don't think it would have to be. Aren't they supposed to be separated politically? I mean, they're supposed to be, but, you know, that's going to have implications across national security when you're searching a former United States president's home. It's never happened before. So I don't really know what that would happen, but I would think public integrity was what I was trying to think about where it would go up through um, the AG's office. So, yeah, so I, that's I think, the, and that, I, those things don't happen over. That's not like a hey, next hour we're going to brief this guy, and next hour th- these are these are weeks at a time, sometimes months at a time, and and you're getting remember you're you're constantly getting task lists back. Hey, I like what you did in paragraph you know ninety four, but in ninety three you said the same thing. And it really doesn't apply to this statute. That's the kind of shit you're going through to get a search warrant. In the meantime, I could go with a with a subpoena forthwith and go to go to the attorney's office and I don't I don't need any more than permission from the attorney general directly to say, yeah, I don't mind if you get that guy's trust account. Go. So I can walk in and say, give me that shit. And they gotta produce it within twelve hours. And I sit there until until it's produced. Even at the highest level? Even at the highest level. How many, that's another thing. Like, you know, we talk about this with the presidency, the idea that one man or one woman does this job. It's like all the shit you got, it's not even possible. But it's a similar question with like the AG, with all the stuff that's going on. How many goddamn cases and forms and, I mean, it's all serious. They get to, like, if it gets to his desk, like, it's serious as all hell. Like, how how much now this one with Trump I I know obviously he's paying close attention because this is like the granddaddy type of them all it's a it, it's a former president but with important cases that aren't Trump like how much can they even really review what's going on well, they're, they're one re- human being they're relying heavily on their districts right so each you know southern district eastern district whatever they're relying on those U.S. attorneys who are relying on their chiefs. Of each of their division, chief of frauds, you know, okay. chief of this, chief of violent crimes, whatever it is, they're relying on that information to pass along for really a very uh, superficial review, you know, because they be- they know that the district has done their done their homework. They know that this case is coming, you know, uh, lid tight, signed, sealed, delivered, and ready to ready to indict or ready to execute, whatever it might be. But on the level of a president, a former sitting president, I can't imagine that someone in, you know, DOJ or someone in, um, you know, the AG's office is going to say, yeah, you know what? Yeah, let me just let me just click my initials on this and, and yeah, move forward. Yeah, sure. I, I so, agree. Yes. But, so I think that's the difference is when there's much of the work has already been completed and as tight as you can possibly get. So – you can take, and you know, I'm sure he knows, like everybody else, I'm sure he knows the districts to go to, just like the FBI director knows what divisions he's going to provide certain cases on. You know, if he's he's got a national case, I'm sure he's going to pick and choose, that's you pick and choose offices to help on that. Yeah. You know, and one office is going to be centered, but then they're going to send in those specialists from around, i.e. the Hillary Clinton investigation. What do you mean? You know, they're going to pull the best and brightest public corruption people to come in and take a look at that. So they're not just going to say, well, it happened in D.C. or it happened in New York where she was living at the time. Hey, let's just have the New York office run with it. No, they're going to pick and choose who they need to pick and choose in order to make sure they're getting the best effort and the the greatest, you know, sense of, of experience. You say with this, though, for it could have been as long as four to six months, which doesn't mean Maybe longer, man. But okay, either way, you know, they were... Like we said, they were in there on full permission as late as May, right? Two and a half months ago. And along the way, I, I mean, I don't know what the order of business is, but I got to think certain cases jump the file, meaning that, you know, they get press, they, they get preference. So, For so a lot they, of reasons. Yeah. So you're still thinking it could have taken four to six months. I would think that anything, that anyone in that chain of command that you laid out, which thank you for doing that. That was great. But anyone in that chain of command, when they get one email that says Trump, everything else is off the table and I don't care if they're on vacation, they're coming home and they're handling this. Yeah. No, I believe, I think it's expedited for sure in his behalf, but I'm talking like the process in, in and of itself, generally speaking, can take forever. And the fact of the matter is, who knows, during that time that these people were allowed, or these agents were allowed access in May, you know, who knows what they saw that kind of led them to believe, hey, 
you know, we, we've got to we've got to continue on with the search warrant process because we don't believe we're getting you know the correct response. Um, and responsiveness is a big issue. You know, it's there, there's it's a, it's a huge issue. You know, um, well, I, it, does this does this actually make sense with regards to what we're asking for? You know, I was I would always check search warrants after we we did. I would be like, all right, what were we hoping? this warrant would provide and what did we get that actually speaks to that particular hope based on the evidence that we had and then what's totally off the charts like has nothing to do with anything we asked for and then what's kind of on you know could go either way well actually i meant to ask this earlier but we got into something else but with mobster son's dildos yeah that wasn't on the list for things to check so how did you use that well, against him? He, here's the thing. We we were we were looking for cash. Right. But you so found going that. under beds and those kinds of things. That that had nothing to do with that had that was a discussion. And the discussion looked something like this. Hey sir, can you come here for a minute for a minute? Hey, do you know why he's got this stuff? You know, why he's got, you know, this stuff and this stuff and these magazines and and then you just see like, you know, guy turns white, right? Even just though the, even though you're not going to be able to report that well, I mean, we're just talking to him. We're asking, yeah. "Hey, we need some help. We need your cooperation for a minute." What? What is this? So, but when you use that as leverage against him, couldn't he have argued you can't put that in the report because yeah, it wasn't covered? Of course, but he just didn't know to do that. Or no, I mean, he could say, "Hey, I, it can't go to court, but I could certainly go in my report. I found something that appeared to be a large dildo <laughs> under you know the twenty five year old son's mattress, and that could show up in the New York Times." Yeah. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Okay. But, you know, he he doesn't want to even take a chance that I write that report and I'm testifying ar around it. It's, it's, it's leverage. We're allowed to do that stuff. Okay. You know, it doesn't say it doesn't say in the search warrant all cash but no dildos under the, you know, son, 25-year-old son's mattress. Got it. You find, you find things and you have to search through. Now, if that was something where we were like, hey, there's dildos. We, we had heard there's potentially dildos that have cocaine inside them that's the way they're shipping cocaine well then that's a different story right so then then we're, we're taking those you know and we're talking hey this is the cocaine filled d you know so yeah walk it out like exactly that. exactly larry's got it exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. exactly so so i mean i think that's you know that's just that's a different way of doing business but you know my, my head is spinning all over the place with regards to where this could have what what is the i would love to be able to say what's the end game on this boys and girls, what's the end game? What are we trying to accomplish by doing this? And I think you're absolutely right. The the, the home run is the headline uh, from all sides. If it's the family, they're like, okay, shit, maybe this will slow them down. If it's the Republican Party that's doing it, hey, okay, maybe this will slow them down. If it's the, the left, okay, maybe this will slow them down. And he's saying, this is great because I love fights. Yeah. I love fights. I love to oh, admit a commercial. Honestly, I love a good fight. How could you be this dumb at this point? This guy doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't. And you just allow it to happen. Like just whatever he's doing, allow allow it to happen. Allow him to get out there. He he's he's got the ability to be able to run for president. Um, you know, there's it's his right to run for president. Um basically debate him. Debate him on issues, you know, but would you want would you want Joe Biden debating anybody? No, and that's what they're thinking, and, and you certainly don't want uh, Kamala either debating anybody. I mean, no, they're not going to make they're not going to understand what the issues actually are to be able to debate him. And he's a bully. He's a bully. He's a typical narcissist. Yes, that's what he is. You know, his world. You know, you either adjust to his world or you don't. And he really doesn't care either way. It's his world, and he's in charge of it. He's the first person in, in the history of politics. Who can win a debate without saying a goddamn thing, without saying or what? saying yeah. things that are just completely off wrong the charts? Because he's in it, he's got the entertainer factor. I mean, you can't not, you still can't not laugh at it. No, you know, it's not like some of his social stuff and things I see these days. I really actually can't laugh at because it's gone so far. Yeah. But like when that dude gets on a stage, lights, camera, oh, it's, action. It's, there's he's no on. one better than Donnie he's fucking on. Trump. He's on. It's unreal. I mean, think about that. There's like a. 12 or 13 minute clip where I think it's him, him and Pence and it's Pelosi and Schumer and the press is there. And he starts, he starts like, just like we're building the wall. Like that's it. And they, they are getting so front and Pence is just sitting there like, 
<laughs> like a, like a deer in the headlights. And he just kept it up. And Nancy, Nancy, you know, and it just, it's like, how can you not laugh at, and I'm looking and saying, like, the Chinese have to be looking at things and saying, thank God, you know, this is great. This is the greatest thing that ever happened. That's you know? what I'm saying. Like, like they that's the, this. that's the scary part. That's the this. scary part of what's going on right now is um, they love the fact that we're at each other's throats, regardless of whether or not we're this or that, or we align with this or align with that. Bottom line is, you know, we're trying to, what, well, I don't even know. I don't even know. What are we trying to do? Like, what is, what is, we're fighting for these midterms through dirtying up a guy who's not even in office anymore, who who is claimed that he's going to run. Well, now it's clear he's going to well, run. Yeah. It's clear he's yeah. going to run now, but. You, you make a great point, you know? I mean, it's it's empowered the guy again. They, they might have had him on his heels. Now he's empowered. And they got to know it. They ha- Like, they're not... Somebody's they, got to know it. They're not... Listen, I know people are blinded by their political ambitions and beliefs. I fully understand that, including the politicians, although cynically, I think a lot of them, they're just playing the game. They know exactly what they're doing. But even if that is the case, these people... Like, you don't... You're not Mitch McConnell. You're not Nancy Pelosi lasting in there for... 80 fucking years unless you are a smart, smooth political operator. Absolutely. And so these people, they know how this is going to play. They know how this, like, they can simulate this ahead of time these days, especially. And it's like, you are, you are, same thing I said before. You're using the same playbook and you are now making him a victim. You are taking a guy who puts out things like the Mother's Day tweet or whatever, not tweet, truth. I love that truth truth whatever he puts that thing like if you just let this dude be on his own he's done he's cooked it's over but you keep on empowering him and he raises money off of it it makes him it only makes him more brazen it only makes him more brazen i mean it 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 absolutely does and you know i don't we said we were talking earlier i don't hate the guy i mean i don't like this whole um shit that happened with live golf and you know having hosting the saudis at his club I mean, you know, my, my wife lost her husband in the towers to the right. Saudis. And that's the other thing. If there's any good lawyers out there, please please start suing the shit out of the Saudis. Um, these kids deserve more. Uh, the, the firms that are working on it are terrible. All right. Uh, public well, service he announcement. Was, he Sorry. Was been sound, um, that, he was – look, Trump had some decent – in the Middle East, he had some decent foreign policy. There's no doubt. Like, he was excellent against ISIS. Well, that, was, that was a bright spot. Secretary but, of State, man. But, Who did he have in there? But he literally got on his knees and gave MBS fellatio during yeah. all four years. Yeah. Because MBS was good for Israel. So yep. it is a awful it is an awful look. No, to I, have know. Him I know. I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. Hey, by the way, I want to just say um someday my grandson Sal will will watch this because this will be memorialized forever. So Poppy loves you. We'll leave it at that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Because I never get, you know, you never get a chance. I wish yeah. I had something like that from my grandfather. You haven't done that. Yeah. That's cool. See, that's a nice thing. Yeah. You put a little my time man. capsule My there. man, Sal. He could see how smart West Point class of 2043. Oh, you already decided yeah. that for him? Yeah, he's going. He's going? Yeah, playing golf. What if he comes to you and says he's going the other way? Going to Naval Academy? Yeah. Oh. Would you disown him? Just for a couple, just for the four years, but then I'd just be back. For the four, okay. He'd be no, back of again. course. He, anywhere he wants to go, whatever. Good. As good. long as it's West Point. want to make sure we get As long that. as it's West Point. But what about, like, there's very reasonable, and I would argue great questions coming from the right side around Hunter Biden. Now, the- How now, about that shit, bro? Now, yeah. Now, How about that shit? That's terrible. What, the question, Terribly the done. The question they reasonably have is why hasn't his ship been raided? And that's a great question. That is a great question. I don't. I have no idea why some agent wouldn't jump on that and want to push it. It's it's right. It's the right thing to do. So I don't mean like the party, but it is kind of the right thing to do. But um, you know, I mean, that guy's that is a just a wealth of information that is all corroborated by the fact that he left his own laptops at a Delaware repair shop and never picked the stuff back up. And, you know, the pictures he sent, the texts he sent, everything else. I, I don't understand. And, and there's been like, there's been times where, where the House has actually um, called for evidence and the Bureau can't find the evidence. What do you mean? I, 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 maybe I'm missing something, but I'm thinking like there was a time when, the, when um, there was like a senator or a congressman, I can't remember who it was, but he basically had like a hearing and he's like, I'm calling for this evidence. I'm calling for these laptops. I want to put them into, um, I want to put them into evidence, you know, uh, 
uh, congressional evidence locker, and they couldn't find, like, there was no idea where it was. Even though he has the ability, because obviously the author, that uh, that British author who wrote the book, um, what, what was it, something laptop, you know, I can't remember the... I don't know anything about that. Yeah, there's some book that she wrote. It, it, um, about by, about yeah, Hunter's laptop? Yeah, yeah. Laptop from Hell. That's the name of the book, Laptop from Hell. And she has all the information that the Bureau should have been able to, to you know, corroborate. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, that, is a, that is a question I'll probably go to my grave with. What the hell happened with that? Why has no one done anything about that? And the other obvious one is that, and I'm trying to pull up. I, I don't know if I can find it. Because some of the things we're trying to pull up today are so specific. So if I can't get it, like, on it, I yeah. don't want to read it because you don't know what you're reading while you're on air so some people will have to look at stuff while we're doing this but like you know it was mentioned earlier with respect to the judge and and some of trump's ties as well but like we haven't gotten any type of raid on people from the black book with epstein you know the arguably the first guy tied was trump and it had nothing to do with this at least but like it is a really awful awful open thing going on right now where the the rabbit is out of the hat people know this guy if this was an intelligence operation and i do not believe it was a united states intelligence operation but that's my personal opinion i do not believe that i, I think it was somewhere else but if it was an intelligence operation that clearly while it was going on at some point the u.s had they knew it was happening right if that was the case I understand the need to protect secrets and keep things for the interest of national security and stuff like that. But when it's this blatant and it's this many people involved and it's this many important people involved and it's and it's even like apolitical, it's it is across the spectrum. You can find it. How do you not throw the public some bone? How do you put this woman in jail for 20 years in a in a single a prison basically she's got yoga classes she got everything she didn't go to jail for life either i mean she's gonna be old when she gets out but like you know she's got access to all this stuff didn't have to unveil anything and the records got sealed by order of the judge at the end of the trial and the trial was carried out christmas fucking week right christmas into new year's week like how are you that blatant and how do we keep on shoving this under the rug as if it's nothing and Mm. meanwhile the president's getting rated the former president's getting rated for some documents Man, that's that's one that'll haunt me till I go to my grave. I'm telling you, it's a couple of things you mentioned. It's difficult to kind of figure out what the incentive, like, what is the end game there? Well, he wasn't the only one. Right. But I'm just saying, what is the end game with regards to um, covering that or, or not pursuing more or not doing a better job in kind of nurturing her cooperation? not doing a better job mm. in in terms of nurturing you know those people those those business partners of of Hunter Biden um you know we're 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 just we've dropped the ball the bureau is not weaponized but it has dropped the ball and so i think some of the leadership it it was always a place where you were going to get our thoughts our ideas our investigative plans whether you want it to get them or not it feels like we stopped doing that we stopped pursuing that you know it was it's frustrating to work a case as you know the attorneys are worried about proving the case beyond a reasonable doubt and losing a trial and their law license and and all we're all we're concerned with is bringing forth the best cases we can with the best evidence we have when those two things kind of collide and there's some type of political aspect to it, whatever that might be, and some of the stuff we've talked about, some of the stuff will, will be questionable for a long time, um, that's where I feel frustrations kind of mount with the, with the public, with retired and former, with good, solid patriots, and we kind of start thinking about all the potential opportunities to kind of um, do the right thing, to move things forward in the right way. 
and why it's not happening. That's what I mean by the end game. Why is this stuff not happening? Why is no one interested in putting their foot on the pedal and, and moving this as far as we can? What is the reason behind that? Um, you know, and you made it, you made a great point. I don't think this is a, a, an intelligence operation, you know, a domestic intelligence operation. Um, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what it can or, or what it might or might not be. Um, if it is, it's certainly backfiring. Um, awesome. because people are looking at us, people meaning countries are looking at us and we're just not the same country that we have been in the past. Never perfect, but but at least on top of things, at least understanding what the issues were, at least not being – like I, I read that to you, right? I read that text that I got about this scenario. Right. And Before it's like – we were on camera. And, and pretty, smart, um, pretty smart people that I feel very close to are saying this is 1861 all <laughs> over. You know, this is north against south. We got it. We got to we I mean, come chill. on. We got to chill with that, man. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, and that's that's the thing. That's what these places want. When you look at Russia and China, and when I had Andy Greenberg in here, he had an amazing line, and I'm mm -hmm. going to use it because, like, they're both bad. And I talk about Russia a lot, and I talk about China a lot. But he's like, let's call it what it is. Russia's a hurricane. It's bad. China's climate change. I mean, they're like, that's an amazing line. That is had. a great line. So, and this, and by the way, this is a guy who reported on all the Russian disinformation campaigns and everything, and he's saying that. And like, <laughs> I really appreciate that because he's looking at, at the full scope of things, which is what I feel like we need to do. But like, one thing that those two places do have in common is, and, and I'm real. I think the evidence points to this. It is an opinion, but I, I think I have pretty good evidence to back this up, is that they're not, there may be some interest in preferring this guy to that gal or that gal to this guy or whatever. But all in all, their number one goal is to sow dissent. They want people as pissed off and apart as possible. And so I try to like look at these types of things and keep a level head and actually assume that people are average. Not great, not bad average in most cases you have some bad people you have some great people let's say they mostly sure. balance yeah. out yes and i look at the fact that these are all chains of commands and there's a lot of people involved a lot of opinions whispered down the lane and everything and i say to myself whether we're talking about this raid and the investigation there whether we're talking about things like epstein even or you know any of the litany of issues we have where it seems to be stuff is politicized it could very well be true that there are forces who are just – and I'm not even saying it's Russia or China. I'm saying figure out who it is no matter what it is. People with agendas, people with money, places with agendas, places with money. It could very well be that the smallest little one-sentence beliefs are injected organically into certain people that exist within these chains. And then it just kind of spreads like a cancer. And so it starts with a basic objective – that they say, well, based on this, let's look at this. And then it spirals and it goes on and on and on. All they got to do is is just, you know, stand at the top of the slippery slope and give a little nudge. And guess what? Science will take it the rest of the way. And so while that may not be the way this actually is, maybe there, there are a lot of corrupt forces and stuff. And I know there certainly are. But it, it could be just these small micro influence campaigns going on that then lead us to get into these groupthink systems where, by the way, places like the FBI are forced to defend themselves and the people who aren't in the FBI who are citizens are forced to attack them. I mean, I know you don't like them and everything, and that's been well outlined on here, but the summer of Jim Comey in 2016 and the fall of Jim Comey in 2016 was the best example ever because the guy went from right-wing pariah to right-wing hero, left-wing hero to left-wing pariah. And regardless of your own issues with him and his many flaws as a director and the decisions he made in bringing all that information out in a different way, we've covered that. Certainly agree with you on pretty much all the issues there. He did, like, he still got caught in the middle of that. And that part I have some empathy for because I'm like, well, even if it was for a lot of the wrong reasons, he wasn't necessary pol necessarily politicized at the time. He he equally, in different ways, bothered both. Yeah. 
You know? He did. No, he definitely um he he had the he had the ability to, to kind of be a chameleon, you know, to kind of show himself as was needed. And um and that never sat well with me or most of the bureau. But yeah, I, I don't I kind of I know exactly what you're saying and I, and I, and I do have kind of a, a piece of me that that understands that and it's possible. Um the possibility of that happening where you've just got little waves that become, you know, bigger swells that become tidal waves, you know, and and in the meantime there's no true corruption, but it becomes corrupt mm. as things move on. And so um, I love that line, though, um, with regards to, you know, hurricane versus climate change. I mean, yeah. that, that is, I think that's about as accurate as you're going to get um, with regards to what's going on. In the meantime, um, I can't think of any other time in history where we've just been a laughing stock for those countries. And they're looking and they love what's going on. And, and this headline continues that wave. You know, it makes that swell a little bit deeper and a little bit quicker. Um and picks the wind up a little bit, you know. So that's kind of where we're at. But it, uh, let's hope that we can regain and not become that third world country that I've predicted. Um, yeah. Over the course of the next cup, you know, course of the next hundred years, um, we're certainly headed that way. But we can stop it. It can be stopped. How? You know? Yeah. Great question. I, I, you know, I think about that all the time, and I've got some pretty radical ideas in my my own mind. But share. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Police state run by <laughs> no, Jim DiOrio. No. no, but we definitely do need a crime czar. I, I, I did see some. I did see a report that was encouraging yesterday, where there's a group of police chiefs that have gotten together and kind of formed this um, alliance that is going to discuss common, you know, commonalities in their areas and crimes that are really, you know, raging in those areas. And I think it's like the Chicago guy and somebody in Texas and somebody in the West. So you're getting different perspectives. Hmm, that's in, interesting. In you know, in the Northwest, so. I kind of like the fact that they are they are kind of seeing it and addressing certain things. Um, I, th I think this infighting and the fact that we've not been able to to, to put a cap on the amount of time these idiots serve, i.e., Schumer and yes. Pelosi and McConnell and and every one of them, you know, every one of them. There needs to be a rotation in and out of that. It needs to become much more of a diverse body that doesn't benefit over the course of 40 plus years Biden himself you know um uh, over the course of 40 plus years to have these riches that you know makes them feel like they're invincible Hunter Biden you know I mean that's really what it comes down to I mean you can go across the board I mean look at Jared Kushner yeah that dude's one of the biggest douchebags in the history of the world you know didn't you lock up his father was that you we who did, did that? yeah Charlie yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 yep yep um and and that guy is still the same idiot that he'll always be you know so it's kind of across you know across lines i mean it's it, it it's all over the place right now with regards to the, the destructive kind of um dilution a delusion of, of of us not being able to come together that's really what all it is you know it's 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 delusional to think that we can't do better um still have a powerful military you know we still have a lot of committed folks it's getting it's not it's not getting better but it's not getting worse I, I'm encouraged by that um, you know I'm looking at the educational system in this country is there's issues that need to be actually resolved discussed negotiated and and put in place are you talking about like primary school education yeah or I'm just are talking, you talking about talking universities both. Okay. You know, both. I mean, university is a business. You know, that's the way it's right. always going to be. You know, okay, I'm going to University of Delaware. Oh, yeah, you know what? Uh, we were looking at you. You know, your grades are okay. And SAT. Oh, wait, you can pay the full bill. Oh, you're in. Oh, my God, <laughs> look at this. You know, so it's kind of that needs to, that yeah. needs to, but that is that ever going to change? I don't know. It, it, um, well, you know how I don't it can know. change. People won't have to go anymore. Correct. That's, well, that to me is is something that can there, there should be a thought in that direction. You know, there should be a thought in that direction. I mean, my kids say to me all the time, why do I waste my time at college? You know, not for the fun of it, but for like the expense of it, you know, and I, I'm a government servant. So, you know, we had to take some loans and we had to do what we had to do to make things work, but we did. Different time too. Not yeah, to different date time, you, but yeah, we did. And, um, and we got through it, but I understand their concerns. You know, they still have, they still each have a payment. 
you know, here it is. My, my daughter's graduated 10 years ago. My son, you know, seven years ago. And we're working hard to move towards it, but it's the truth. You know, it's it's the truth. So you're right. I think that's if if it becomes less of a requirement, maybe that's for for business and for doing things. And 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 this your generation is is smart. You know, the 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 spirit, the entrepreneurial spirit, is terrific. And and I think that's yeah. going to help as we move forward. Kids are going to look more towards, you know, maybe maybe going instead of going to college, maybe going nonprofit route. You know, and then coming out of the nonprofit route and going into their own business and and making things better through that. Um, you know, this whole FOMO thing, man, like uh, social media is just that that's a problem. It's causing a lot of issues. That's the other thing I worry about. It's causing a lot of issues surfing. It's one thing to use social media like I do, you know, to to do my to quickly link idiots that decide to put themselves up there. It's great. I you know, please continue to use social media. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're good at J3 it. J three is loving it. Um but you know, the other the other part of this is it makes it, it causes some mental we've talked about this before, you know, mental health issues, you know. Um, wow, that, that dude's traveling the world. I'm not doing it. No, he's not. You know, he's just a jerk off, you know, that's putting stuff up. He's not, he's an unhappy guy because he's got to throw that up there so that people accept him. Um, you, you know, there's just a, a lot of, there's a lot of things that I think about that we can do better and that we've always done better as a country. Mm -hmm. And now we're just fighting each other. So when I look at my buddy's, you know, kind of text where he's like, we're back to 1861, brother against brother, you know? Fuck out of here. You know? I get it, but but he, I he's, hate hearing that shit. It, well, he's well, he's a little crazy, but at the same time, we're fighting each other. You know, well, we're fighting against each other for 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 similar and common beliefs. I just you know? want to. I always say this. I just want to see these people's feeds. I want to look at the right and look at the yeah. left. Give me your phone. Let me look at your feed. Right for five minutes, I'll right. diagnose your problem real fast. Absolutely, because it's insane. No one's looking at opinions that are not not only in the echo chamber and the. Echo chamber. Right. And so they, they convince themselves of all these things. And like, I again, I try to keep a balanced way of looking at this from above. And like, yeah, when something well, looks bad, it's bad. And we're going to call it, this looks bad. It does. This Trump raid looks it's, it's bad. bad. And you're, I don't you're, give a fuck but, what your political you're an independent, are. you're an independent thinker. You're able to take a look at things and make your own decision. Many folks, because the because the education system, the, the college system has failed them, yes. only, only have an opinion as to what they read last. Yes. It doesn't matter. Or what they read. Hey, or what they see. I only subscribe to this. I only subscribe to that. I only watch this. Or I only watch that. That's my opinion. That's right. You know, it's not your opinion. It's somebody else's opinion that you're you're going ahead and jumping on on ship. You know, independently think a little bit, and and that's I think the the importance of looking at, um, you know, looking at things through your own lens, through your own background, through how you were raised, through the things you had mm. to persevere through. And, and it starts to come to light a little bit better, even this issue. Like, what is, I always try to look, what is the motivation for all sides? And in this mm. case, it's similar. It's to shut him up. All sides, all sides say, I don't want this idiot running. And I truly believe there's some family interest in that. Yeah, it's a huge revelation. I truly that. believe that. And and so I think it's all this, We're we've got it. It's all the same piece. You know, it's all the same piece. There's nobody good. There's nobody bad. But everybody's down the middle. Well, our, national security wise, we're, we're getting ourselves in trouble right now. As how we so? speak. I just think we are. I mean, look around. At, look around. What's going on? You know, we're not. We don't have the. We don't have the platform or the or the stage that we used to have. And this poor guy's sick. He's sick. There's no other way to look at it. Old. He's a sick man. He's a sick. He's man. old. I mean, the best was. I, I hate to laugh at this. It's not funny because it's really not funny. I mean, trying to put a, his own sport coat on, like we were talking about yesterday, right? Yeah, Man, he, yeah back in the day, at least at least there was no you know no <laughs> tweets, and you could put your own sport coat on. That's the level of the presidency. That That's the what we day. want. Yeah, we won't want any tweeting and be able to put your own sport coat on. Yeah, done. You're elected, nominated. Mm -hmm. Well, that's in the and it is important because it's in the Oval, and then that's on the global stage. I understand that. Yep. I will say. Speaking to some people recently with access, just leave it at that, mm -hmm. I do feel a lot better about our defensive and offensive capabilities relative to everybody yeah. in the world than I did. Because even if there's an idiot in office as we've had for the last, I guess now six, seven years, whatever it is, 
that doesn't help. It's a problem. It can cause a lot of issues. That military and the things that exist within it and around it, around the world, exist. Yep. And so, yeah, like that doesn't yep. mean it's going to be like that forever. But right now, based on some certain other places in comparison that I've talked with these guys about, we look good. We're there. Yeah. Yeah, we're there. And so I we got to maintain that. Yeah, so much so that we, we, we formed a cyber branch in the military. Mm. We've never been able to do that. Wait. We've never had that the wasn't skill a thing? level. No, not until the last 10 years. I guess because they technically were outsourcing that to the other bureaucracies. Within yeah, government. but it's, yes, definitely. But this is a more, you know, this is this is a more structured, a more pointed program. Okay. We've never had that before. That's at this it. level, at this level, we've had people, but we haven't had branches, if that makes sense. Well, so I'm happy. I'm, I'm thrilled with that and seeing what's going on and how it's going on and being in a world where I, I do get some access to that, even though I'm, you know, kind of um, men in blacked out, you know, kind of, um, but, but I do get some access to that. So I, I feel like you do about that. I think we're in great shape on that front. Um, I just truly think that. I encourage people to take some time to think about think about the motivate think about what's in it for the people who are doing what they're doing. You know, obviously the press is always gonna love this stuff. So but there there's that's never changed. There's never been a day when a when a when a press writer or when a um you know, a network has said, you know what, I really don't want any big <laughs> deals today you know so i'm saying trump's a money maker it's for them. A, he's a money maker all day he's you know, a all and the maker. more he calls them fake news the better it is for them it's you know? it is a it is um, a mutually beneficial it's relationship perfect. it's perfect it's a perfect dynamic but <laughs> you know how does where are the other motivations coming from what are the only possibilities to to create that headline look at that independently think about it and you I challenge you to come up with your own conclusions or maybe even provide us, you know, through the notes with, with some other ideas, some other options. Maybe it wasn't X, Y, or Z. Maybe it was, you know, P and Q, you know, mm -hmm. who I don't know. I don't know. It help us to understand so that we can take a look at that motivation and kind of figure it out. But I will tell you that the weaponization of the FBI is not the story. You know, it's not, there's one political appointee. He's, he's a guy that has limited charisma and limited ability to um, give anybody a sense of of safety or security. Um, there's no there's no like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna sick you on this guy or that guy or this person or that person. Really, not that. You know what? What I will say in the bureau, and I'll share this. You know, there's times you you get an exciting opportunity to work on a case like this. There there might be you know, there might be a little over. Overzealousness. Zealousness yeah. towards doing things. And that's natural. I mean, oh my God, I got chosen to be on the Trump. Yeah, humans aren't perfect. Yeah, I, I, I got chosen yeah. to be on this or that. But at the end of it, when it gets to the to the level of a guy like me or a guy like above, we're going to look at it you know, extremely objectively. We're going to remove all that subjectivity. I mean, listen, I'm encouraging, hey, that was a great job, really good. Man, great thinking, great creativity. I like what you did. I like how you did it. But I'm also going to say, wait a minute, we can just serve a subpoena and get the same information? Mm. What the fuck are we doing? I'm going to be the guy jumping up and down and screaming. I don't think we have much of that anymore. I think it's there. I think, it, I think, mm. they, I think they tend to kind of shy away from those people. So you're, you, know, I, you may have just answered this question, but let me make sure it's out there yeah. so that you can address it directly if yeah. not. Yeah. But you're saying at the beginning of that answer right there, you're saying that there are still, and you've repeated this over and over as well, there's still so many great people at the FBI. Oh. It's not like the place is bastardized. This whole, <laughs> the whole defund the FBI thing. Yeah, Once that's again, great. That's, that's yeah, hilarious. Oh my God. But like- just don't take that my pension. Said, Just don't take my pension. <laughs> pension clause. Pension All right, so clause. you're biased because of your pension. I see. What, I see yeah, yeah. Is. I'm definitely. I'm. I'm actually heading down to to Florida, Southern Florida, right now to oh. to go and serve a, a couple more warrants. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I won't ask about those ones. But like, <laughs> even though you're saying that, you are still also now saying that there are fewer people in those positions have been there, done that at the FBI who are being objective about stuff. Yes. So. Are you like you don't need to give me a percentage? Fewer, well, now it's, fewer, right? Okay, not not right. a lot, but right, fewer. So that's part of it. But yeah. like when you look at, well, let, let, let's just go there. When we've been beating off this the whole time, like when you look at the FBI, 
They're the highest level of police in the land. They're in their own separate distinction. We need them. The same people who were saying, you know, blue lives matter two years ago are now tweeting defund the FBI and and vice versa, right? The people who were, who were saying defund the police are now saying yay to the FBI. You know, it's all political. Yes, all but, political. But when we look at this, there seems to be a clear change in the FBI that's occurred, was probably occurring towards the end of your time there, and now seems to have taken hold where there are more issues than there were before. Yes. So in speaking over the past few days with your friends, by the way, not just in the FBI, in other places, other Mm -hmm. agencies who have opinions Mm -hmm. on this matter, what has been, have you heard anyone talk about solutions to it or identify the clear problems beyond what you've said? And how do we, like, how would we fix the FBI in the court of public opinion over, say, the next three to five years? Well, I think you're seeing this. That's great. And I love that. Yeah. And I've had a lot of differing conversations, but it all is coming back to kind of the same piece. And so in, in saying that, it's an awesome thought. Like, how do we get this better? How do we get back not only public opinion wise, but also to doing the job the way it was designed to be done. Mm. So my thought, and I think I said this, I've said this to you, is to have an, an inspector general that sits with the bureau. And and if you, as you see, both sides of the aisle are calling, you know, at DOJ after these midterms for GO, DOJ to have, um, you know, kind of a monitor, a federal monitor with them. Don't we already watch it? We don't. That? We don't have that. We don't is have it, that. Well, what's the inspector general well, that the, we have? Well, OIG basically OIG is attached. So think about it this way: there's OIG units that are that are part and parcel to every other um, organization. So there. So for instance, um, HHS has its investigative side, and it has the office of the inspector general within the same organization. Who cleans up the messes? Who makes sure the messes don't happen? Who is really okay. focused only on that? The FBI's version of OIG, OIG is that DOJ OIG, but really all they're doing is being a reactive portion of that particular agency. So, in other words, um, let's take an example. So, there's a belief that an FBI agent um, leaked some information. Right on a case, let's just say, like, and we've. I, I'm talking from experience because we've yeah, had yeah, these kinds of things. Yeah. Leaked information at the end of it, um, you know, it turned out to be that is exactly what didn't happen. However, there's an obligation on the DOJ's OIG to open up an investigation on that and to be yes. looking at the agent or agents or office and determine whether or not it makes sense. But that is a reactive piece. So if that were in fact occurring, we're missing out on the opportunity to kind of. Um, be on the front end of that. So we're not solving any problems. We're actually coming in after the fact, which could have oh, consequences that have happened. Okay. My point is, gotcha. I think the Bureau, one of the most important positions, any administration, and, and this will be my opinion, if I do have the opportunity to, to, to have some say on this down the line, is to have an inspector general that sits in the Bureau, that's part of the Bureau, that not part of the Bureau coming up, but somebody that's appointed in, a, in, you know, not in the same world as the director, but as an IG. And that person's job is to go through systems and to make sure systems and operations are the way they used to be or should be. And and the challenge would be to kind of centralize mm. that. And they tried to do it a few years ago with, with another investigative OIG. So, hey, when you open up a certain type of investigation, you must do step one, two, three. That doesn't work. It's a matter of going out and getting to know what each field office is doing, why it's either really good or really bad or somewhere in the middle, and then determining how to make that better and to make sure that things like this don't happen. While it's going on. While it's going on. And and I might be adding to you here, so if this is not the case, shut this down. But and hypothetically have some oversight into ongoing investigations Abs- 1 million and what percent. decisions are made, i.e. One million percent. Right, okay. One like million percent. Stuff. So that IG would have a staff. That's and that really staff would be um, you know, chosen from different communities within the FBI. Who appoints them? Well, I think that would have to be like a board decision, not the IG himself or herself. Uh, I mean, you would definitely want a couple people that 
would be the IG's kind of right hand people that are chosen, but then you'd have staffs of people that would kind of branch out to first do the evaluation of what is fucked up and then make a recommendation, just like what I do for a living now, make an assessment of what's going wrong, come up with re- recommendations, prioritize those recommendations and execute. Why not have like a committee in Congress of Republicans and Democrats well, I think, I think be that's in charge what of do. something like that? Uh, that's what they're going to do. And I think that person would answer directly to that committee. With, Meaning with they place it too, like 100%, they have to agree on somebody. A hundred percent. So I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not talking confirmation. I don't think there needs to be a confirmation. I think it should be something that the director brings to this mm-hmm. committee, and then the committee interviews and determines, hey, this is the right person to do this. Oh, so the director brings the idea of who he or she wants. Yeah, to maybe hire. bring fifteen or twenty people along the way, and then the huh. committee gets to bring their folks in and put it in place and and try it for te- try it for the. Um, you know, half of the new director's appointed term. So for five years, you would get a contract, you know, to to do that and see where you go. And I'm telling you, it would bring things together. It would bring it, the communications lacking. Everybody's competing. New York's competing with New Jersey. New Jersey's competing with Baltimore. You know, all these offices are competing. So how do we get on the right track to move cases forward, to evaluate what people are doing, and to put systems in place that allow easy access to information that's going sideways? That's the way to do this. The directors, the directors should be doing one thing being the face of the FBI internationally and and domestically. He should be mm. traveling to his legats. He should be interacting with other agencies. He should be interacting interacting with other law enforcement across the world. He should be, you know, talking to Congress on a regular basis, not just when shit goes sideways, but talking about things that he's doing, talking about plans that he has, talking about his one and three and five and ten year goals. For the FBI, the IG should be the one that's processing, that's going through and saying, wait a minute, when we do when we do these search warrants, do we ever consider how many times were subpoena for with considered when we were going to do a search warrant? How many times did that happen? Then get those numbers. Then talk to the people about why you chose to do either way. What was the reason that you decided to search to, to serve this search warrant? What happened? If I go out right now, if they gave me access to the hundred agents that were on site there, I'd have the answer. I'd have the answer, and I guarantee it'd be the same answer. Guaranteed. So why not have that in place? That would help to start the repair. Now this isn't a this isn't a one or ten year pro. This is a this is a turn. We we have to turn this organization around, or it's going to be gone. They've been talking about getting rid of this organization forever. The FBI. FBI. Get rid of it. There's no need for. How it. real has that talk been, though? Well, it's never come to fruition in any form or fashion, even to get to a point where they had a plan. You know, it's the same thing like if somebody says to you, I'm going to kill myself, right? And you say, what's your plan? They have a plan. You better get up off your ass. You got a problem. Same thing. Hey, we're going to get rid of the FBI. Well, what's your plan? Well, we don't really have a plan. Okay. Or, hey, here's the plan. In the first year, you are gonna, you got a problem. And that's where I feel we're going towards. And why don't we have some say in it? We meaning – and this IG needs to be a former FBI agent. He needs to be mm. a person who understands the organization and who has no problem – Rocking the boat, so I'm I'm applying. Um, I am applying for the job. Anybody out there, Director Free? Are you there? Um, so that to me is kind of one of the solutions that that can go hand in hand with a crime czar who's understanding what the problems. Yeah, did you say what, what, the, what that is? What earlier? Uh, yeah, basically the crime czar is going to be a person who understands what the actual crime problem, problem problems are nationally, regionally, and break it down to districts. Here's the problems we're having. Like Chicago, nobody should ever be worried about, in Chicago, should ever be worried about ch- check kiting. Should be worried about murder. That's what they do there. They murder people. You mm-hmm. know, and, 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 and it sounds like profiling, but it's not. It's just being smart, understanding what problems are where, how we kind of, and that's what I like about this this group of chiefs that I was just talking about, bringing together, chiefs, yeah, yep, yeah. bringing together and discussing how we, what our best practices are, deciding what a best practice is, and then executing on that. It's again, it's a long process. It's not something that's going to turn overnight, but it's the solution. And all this training is another big portion of this thing, the mm. bureau, bureau training. 
You know, what's the expectations when you come into the Bureau? Well, the expectation is to be the knight in shining armor. It really is. That's yes. how I went in. I yes. want to be the knight in shining armor. I want to understand. Okay, that's great. But how, you know, this is how you should think about going about it. First thing you need to do is learn this job. Learn everything that you need to know about how to do it, what's important, how your report should look, uh, how to interact with certain people, you know, on the, on the U.S. attorney side, how to interact with supervisors on the bureau side. And then from there, you could start putting in paperwork to get promoted. But the Andy, it's the Andy McCabe clause. We've talked about it before. When you get promoted too fast and you don't understand the job, you got a problem. You have a problem. I sent you that clip last night about Sipowitz talking to his kid, right? On oh, yeah. Blue. People, places, things, and the things they it, do. Yeah. People, places, what is, what that the things they this? do, and the times they do them. It's, it's being a good agent. Understanding uh, motivations, why people are doing what they're doing. Right? Including the people internally, you're saying. Including the people yes. inter internally and how you do it right and how you speak up for yourself and what the understanding is with regards to um, a problem or a situation. I'm, a, I'm an agent and I only have five years, but I sit in the South Florida office and I think there's something going on with this particular situation. And I don't think it's right. Not just for what's happening, but for the Bureau and for the eyes. Where, right now, you know where they go? They, they go to some um, – there's some idiot – it's some person in D.C., and I can't even remember, but you call the phone, they never answer, they never call back. No. But you put your report you put your report in. Right. But it's somebody that's supposed to be right. in place. It's somebody that's supposed to be in place to do this job. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. So we need to continue and find a way to have that right person, that right office. And that's my that's my solution. That's what I think we should do. I mean, we look at things like this, though, and... It's like, well, why hasn't the FBI has been around for 80 fucking years, 70 years, whatever it is. It's like, well, why haven't we put some of this in? What's what's the holdup? You know, it's almost like you set up. I guess, like I was saying, we do have the main inspector general's office and everything. But that's like you said, all after the fact. So it's almost like you set these places up for failure. And it's refreshing to hear that somebody at least has an idea of something that could improve. But is that even... Is it realistic to think that anything like that would happen? Well, I mean, I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It's definitely realistic. I mean, I, I think it's, um, it would take the right people. It would take the right thought process and it would take um, someone getting the ear of those right people, right? So the Bureau is still a, um, you know, it's an old boys club. It's yeah. still that way, even though there's probably not an old boy in it anymore but um it's still that way i mean you know you've seen you've read recently about sexual harassment things that have happened mm. um really disturbing shit like really disturbing shit and so um if that's still happening at the level that it's happening at then you have other issues that need to be addressed um and like i said this isn't a this isn't a short-term process this is something that would last or span as long as a political appointment would last or span over the course of, you know, the next 15 or 20 years, maybe 24, maybe 28. But um, I'm hoping to be somebody that at least has the ability to have someone's ear and discuss it in detail. My plan, because I do have a plan. I have a one, three, four. I have a one, three, five and 10 year plan for it. Do you have faith in the FBI today? Yes, absolutely. In spite faith, of all this? In spite of all this, I have faith in the FBI. Why? I, I, because I know the people that are doing the job. I still know the people, the right people are doing the job. But there's not they're not all there. Some of they're those people are there. gone and there's some people who aren't doing their job as well and they're ruining the name for everyone else. Well, I think it, it comes down to leadership, right? So it comes down to the people that are there's some people that are not in the right spots. And the director's weak. Again, it's another it's another Why is he weak? He just is. He has no no ability to kind of relate. Smart guy. Really smart man. I'm sure he's a great attorney. I'm sure of it. I'm positive of it. But it takes more than that. It takes it takes a, a hell of, and listen, I'm speaking, I don't know what his day-to-day -day is. I don't know what his liaison kind of mission is, but it's from all the signs and all the um, you know, kind of speculation, I guess, on my part, I don't see him doing a heck of a lot about that. I don't think he's where he needs to be every day. Well, you've talked in the past about FBI agents who came up through the FBI. 
and the importance of that and how we've gotten away from it. You know, we, we totally have. We didn't have it with Comey. We don't have it with this guy. I don't believe. Or Mueller. Right? Or Mueller. Yeah, Mueller was like a. They're U.S. attorneys. Yeah. yeah, that's what they are. The U.S. attorneys. All of these guys. That's it. See, that's it. That is a culture thing because then they don't understand. You know, they've worked with agents, obviously, like they have an idea, but they don't understand the career. They didn't go through it themselves. You know, it's it's the same argument we could have with other places, too. You oh, know, a lot seen, of other places. We've seen interesting people a lot get of named other the places. head of other agencies. And it's like, if you're someone who works for them, they come in, it's like, well, we were here before you were. That's right. And we'll be here when you fucking leave. And that's the truth. That's yeah. the truth. But, you know, I, I think as a guy who spends, you know, who spent pretty much since 17 years old, a guy who spent his life assessing and then kind of, you know, creating culture, whatever that might be, whether it be in the space, in the military space or in the offensive space or in the investigative space or in now the security space, you know, assessing risk across the board, personal life, professional life, situational, and then making recommendations and prioritizing. It's something I do really well. And it's something that I truly believe I you know, not just me, but there's guys in the FBI that still guys and girls in the FBI that still do that. They still they still assess risk and they make decisions based on their recommendations and their thoughts about culture and how do we get this right and how do we do it right and how do we stay objective and apolitical, right? That's where I think that those are the folks that are missing now and I'm trying to find them again. Mm. I have faith in the bureau. I know there's people there, but I almost sometimes I think we're steering we're the leadership is steering away from those people. Yeah, you're the way the key word that you keep putting out there is like a lot of the leadership. Yes. And not necessarily. The and it's not appointed. It. It's not appointed. And, yeah. and I think the public's getting the message that yeah. this is appointed leadership. Yes. It's not appointed leadership. Right. It's from the from the ranks. But it's also those people I talked about before that are just trying to get promoted. And they're not really worried about learning the job. And when I get the ability to be able to introduce people who need the services of the Bureau. I know the people I go to and I know the people I'll never go to. Mm. And so it's just like anything in life, you know, it's more important to know what you don't want to do as opposed to what you want to do. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's, I think that's more important as a risk assessor and as a security assessor my whole life. And as a crisis mitigator, I want to know, I want to know the things that can hurt me that where I don't want to go. I don't want to really focus in on, well, this is what I can do until I know the things that I can't do. Well, we're so we and fairly so based on what we're reading, we've been so focused on the FBI this whole time. But when cases get to a certain level and have certain stakes to them, my head as an outsider as just I don't want to overstate it. I don't want to go to like conspiracyville, but I'm I'm a realist. I, I recognize that with power comes a lot of players, and players have different motivations, and they're from different places. But I see something like this, and I go, "There's some intelligence involved here, too." Yeah. You say, "Yeah," right away. Yeah, so definitely. How how would that work? Like w when you say yes, what what does your mind go to? Well, I mean, I think it's just a natural. It, it's it's a natural kind of jump. For me, because I understand the importance of having a, a bright intelligence posture and a, a, a dark intelligence posture. And, you know, 9-11 is the perfect example of yes. that. So if you take it forward at, at this point, I think in order to make whatever decision was made and whatever the MO or whatever the end game was – Intel was involved in that. With whoever decided to do this, whoever was the architect for doing this. So, yeah, okay. You, you Archite know what I mean? Architect's an interesting yeah. word. Yep. Let me get more specific. Yeah. I look at things like this, and, and you're an interesting guy to talk to about this as well because you're a rarity. Usually, people at the agencies like CIA, NSA fucking hate everyone at the FBI and vice versa. Yeah. It's just what it is. However, because of your background, previous to being in the FBI, your spy work, things in Army Rangers, and your network of people, including a lot of friends who are at these different agencies, you have a lot of cross-agency respect and have a lot of – have maintained a lot of intelligence even after your career on guys who were there and things like that. So you, you can be more of a, I guess, like unbiased, neutral view on this, which is good. But what to what extent – 
do CIA or NSA interests inject themselves in certain big cases? Is it as, not simple is not the word, but I'm going to use it just for the sake of the argument here. Is it as simple as they have some people on the ground and certain agencies aren't told that they're there or that they're not? They're just kind of whatever. Or is it as complex as they start the ball rolling with certain evidence behind the scenes and then the FBI fills in the blanks? Maybe that evidence, by the way, is stuff that's not gotten legally under the Constitution, but the FBI then go gets their goes and gets their own evidence to support that. Interesting question. So I think it, it's a couple – for me, it's a couple-part answer, um, and I'll take it back to – let's just go back in time and then to the current day. So let's, I think everything relates – the worst intelligence failure we've we've all experienced at 9-11, no yes. doubt about it. And it's gotten a hell of a lot better, um, and when I say a hell of a lot better, I mean in the communication – in the cooperation, in the ability to talk, and relationships have grown and become better. Um, and that is, again, like we've talked about before, that's person to person. It's not agency to agency. It's how I relate to a certain person, or it's how I relate or don't relate to a certain person, and we understand it, we move forward. So the first piece of that is it's still all about relationships and being, being able to be trusted to be in the know for what your mission is and what my mission is. Um, a lot of a lot of the p- folks that are in the bureau um, are so guided by fear that if I do this wrong according to the diog, which is the operational guide, and I don't allow X amount of time to go in between, and I try to I try to develop or sign on a CI or a CW or an asset, and I pay them X before this date, and I don't get certain, um, I won't be. I'll be that can fuck with you forever and a day, right? As long as what you're doing is right and uh, and, and not illegal and not immoral Mm. and not against everything that you believe as a relationship person and against the other sides, and I don't mean the other side, but your, your brothers or your sister agencies, do it. Stop being, stop beating yourself up with, you know, just, mental, you know, (laughs) killing yourself with regards to, oh my God, I don't want to do it because there's too much to it. Right. So on the Intel front, it's that simple. It's, it's relating and saying, what do you have? We, we are, we are receiving information that indicates that in fact, there's going to be a weapons deal in such and such a country. And we're, we're pretty sure it's credible, but what do you have that can help us out? That you feel comfortable sharing with relationship guy Jim as opposed to sharing with Andy McCabe. And I'm telling you, it's better nowadays. And there's guys and girls in the Bureau that can do that well, right? So when you say how it starts, or, or that's how it starts. It's a conversation. You know, it's in a skiff. And it's it's there are some parameters around What's how skiff stand for again uh, like secret compartmentalized right. yeah. interior facility yep. or intelligence facility, so there there are certain parameters that are set, but that doesn't mean that they can't be kind of adjusted based on the case. So, in, for instance, you know, listen, um, we have four liaisons that sit in Langley every day from the bureau or 10 liaisons from the agency that sit in the bureau's New York office, right? So really you need to pass your information through through those people. I get that part of it and that's what people focus on. So they're like, well, I really don't like Julian and he's one of the only ones here at Langley from the bureau. So fuck him. I'm not going to talk to him about it. I'll just run with it. And if something blows up, I'll be okay. Right. No, it's, it's, Hey Julian. Hey man, you know me, you know what I'm doing. I got something really particular in South America. I know that's not a place that you want to be. Um, you know, do you mind if I talk to, and here's the person or here's the number, here's the person, right? Here's the number. So, so that's, what's missing. That's what I find is still missing and no, no offense, you know, don't take any offense to the fact that it's, it's generational, but bottom line is, generation your generation and he, and my kids and everybody else has focused in on themselves right looking at computers doing the research being smarter than we ever were not having to really go outside and relate mm. to an individual or another person or ask for a favor or admit that they can't do something or admit that they don't have they want to learn more whatever it is so so that causes that internal well oh shit that rule says i have to email um 
Bill Johnson in order to get permission to talk to Julian, and he's not answering his fucking email, so... Um, I don't know. Well, you know what? Fuck it. It's not really worth it. And the time passed and I really don't have an opportunity anymore. They justify all that shit in their head. Right. So I think, I think we, as an organization, the agency as an organization has done better. And you've seen it personally with the relationship that you've helped establish amongst yeah, with you, with, with, with you and Andy, and and that's yeah. that's a, you are a little different though too. Like, yeah, but but it's okay you know. to be different, is what I'm saying. And and I think even I've changed some minds within the bureau just by being out here doing this. Right, and I and, that and you was, know how tentative I was about doing this. Listen, that, that's the funniest part. <laughs> right, but like, I that answer was great because it it explained the overt nature of the communication between Correct. the two. So I wanted Correct. I, I Correct. was not going to stop you there cuz that was very important information. I'm talking about some of the covert stuff that could well I was talking about that. I was talking about overt, but I was also talking about covert where it could be you don't know that this dude is there. You don't know that agent so and so is on site as a part of a raid or something, which by the way, and I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying in your head, when you see crazy shit like this go down, you wonder, you know, you put on the little tinfoil and you go, huh, well, we know the CIA didn't necessarily like Trump. So maybe, maybe. And then there could be somebody on the ground there now. Yeah. I, and I can't, I can't argue against that fact. Mm. I can't say either way that that doesn't happen, hasn't happened, won't happen, or did happen. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if that kind of stuff is going on. Um, you know, I, I have a unique sense, you know, kind of like a gut, a true gut feeling where I get sick to my stomach if something like that happens. It's it saved me on numerous occasions in numerous situations. There's a lot of folks like that. Yeah. that have that. So they sense it and they see it and they remove themselves from it or they get aggressive with regards to it. I would have no problem asking those questions before it even went down. And, you know, you see a dude, I mean, it's not that difficult. You see a guy that just shows up two months before sitting in your space. I'm just going to mm -hmm. use the skiff. Just going to use the skiff, bro. I'm, I'm a guy. I'm doing the new tech on your on your mesh, you know, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that's a fucking agency guy, you know, period. And, and, you know, within a week, me, the way I was, and the way Andy is, and the way some other people that we know are, we're going to ask the question. We're going to snag you out and snag your ass out for coffee in my car, not in your car, because I don't want to be recorded. <laughs> and I'm going to say, what the fuck are you doing here? And why aren't you telling me? You're a jerk off. You're not welcome in my space. And, you know, he's going to go home that night and say, I don't know what you're talking about, whatever. And the next day, I'm going to get called in and explain what it's, what's going on. So you did run into something. Absolutely. Of it happens all the time. It happens more than you think. Not yes. all the time, but it happens yes. more than you think. And, um, but every one of those people, I, there's not one example that I can say that I'm not friendly with and or still able to work with. And that's not just on the active, uh, on the roles of the agency guys or on the roles of NSA. These these are these are civilians that I'm now still friends with and do business with that we're working for and with. These mm. are civilians that are working for and with, or people that I'm now, you know, helping on their security posture that I ran across these folks or they had the right. same sense and right. came to came to a guy like me or a guy like Andy and said, You gotta help me. How do how do I communicate with these people? Because I don't know how to do it. So let me just in case some people missed the importance of what you just said i'll yeah. translate a little yeah. farther yeah. and say that that means that if there are situations in the private sector where certain individuals have approached private individuals posing as someone else and then reveal their identity to be something within the intelligence world yep you have been somebody who is called on to then mediate that situation one million percent not only mediate but but actually um it's bad to say but not not escalated but actually put it into motion to be creative and to be productive for both sides. Right. You know, because yeah. I know how to handle it. I, I, I get it. That's Been what, there, done that. There it is. Another, there's, there's a risk assessment. <laughs> you know, your risk to not take advantage of this opportunity is worse than your risk to ignore it, you know, or, or to do it. What's scary about that, though, without knowing the details, which no one out there does, and for a lot of these, I don't either based on our private conversations. What's scary is that we are often talking about 
domestic individuals where the approach could be on some what begin as domestic problems. And technically, these agencies that are not the FBI are supposed to operate on an international intelligence basis and not muddy the waters of let's use the big word here, but like spying on a domestic basis. So that's what gives me some pause. It's great that someone like you is there to be able to translate what's going on and figure out like, okay, no, this is fine. That's not whatever. Yeah. Let's make let's make this smooth. But, you know, I keep on thinking about some of the things Andy Bustamante said in the second episode he did with me. I mean, in both episodes, he revealed a lot of points of view where you were without necessarily saying it you can see where he lives and perhaps where the cia resides on issues and there's some stuff that from a freudian perspective if you know what i mean i can't get out of my head and and then he was just on lex friedman as well and, and he said some more things there but one of the things he said that went as far as i can tell largely unnoticed by pretty much anyone else i haven't heard any comments on it from people in episode 107 was he talked about we need an enemy and he was referring to the united states and he was referring to the fact that our people are divided right now we need to come together around a common enemy and at first i was like is wait is he talking about like this is he's talking about politics and then once he went more, I realized he was talking about the same old thing, like having an enemy abroad. And one of the stretches you could make with that statement is you could immediately move that towards the attitude of we need a war, right? And I yeah. never, ever want to do that because no. war is hell. You don't have to be there to have some semblance of an idea about that. Someone like you understands exactly what yeah, that is. Yeah, we don't is. need that. That's we true. don't need that. We don't want that. But war is a reality out there, right? So you yeah. avoid it at all costs, but God forbid it comes to it. Knock on wood. You go in there. You go in guns blazing. That all said, it is very interesting to me that he's saying that three months after, four months after initially saying on concrete the whole Taiwan prediction in 2024 where he's predicting that Taiwan will yes. be taken by China and then he said it a month later on episode 97 here. Yeah. But then, you know, three months after episode 97, he's in there for 107 and he says that shortly before then, as it turns out, Pelosi suddenly makes a trip to Taiwan, which, you know, look, we can think well we want a Nancy Pelosi. I do want threats to be a, a to be an apolitical issue. And I appreciate I was worried for a while that like, you know, Russia was a left wing cause and China was a right wing cause. Now it seems like both parties are getting it on both issues and China, which has a bigger GDP and is probably at the end of the day therefore more dangerous overall, the left is starting to get it. Yep. Whether or not her tactics there of like just fucking flying in there and, and dumping were like the best that's another argument, but I appreciate the fact that even Nancy Pelosi seems to be coming around on that. Do you think that there is some concern within intelligence and within government? And this is the reason I say all this. Do you think that there is some concern there that we need certain people in the government to be able to take advantage of ongoing or what will be upcoming struggles with China and that therefore based on the intelligence that they have that is secret that they can't share with us that is part of what makes it secret they are saying to themselves wait we're going to help make this happen which is totally wrong from a democracy perspective and I don't like that at all but from a behind the scenes perspective is a very heavy thing and it doesn't mean they're right either do you think there could be any of that at play? So let me understand. So you're saying, basically, are they, like we said, like Andy said, we're, we need an enemy, right? Yes. You're saying that there's some orchestration of wanting to solidify our union by assisting in creating that enemy? Yes. And then um, this could have something to do with it. I don't know what, but it could. This whole Trump raid thing. Man, that is... As as wild as that sounds, it's it makes sense to me. 
as wild as that sounds, listen, I do not disagree with Andy's um, statement with regards to needing an enemy. You know, I think it goes back to, you know, Sun Tzu and, and, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer and, um, you know, learn how to navigate through your relationship with people who want to hurt you. Um, So I, I often think about the fact that what has bailed us out of these conditions in the past, what has moved us forward as a united front in our recent years, in your li- in your lifetime, what has made America a flag waving nine eleven? Yeah, right. So, and this is terrible. This is hard for me to even fathom. Yes, I agree. Um, as because I live it daily, but at the same time, um, that's why, as crazy as everything sounds, um, you know, we do need that unity again. We do need the opportunity to have that unity again. Um, And we're not doing fantastically well. So are they creating it? I don't know. Is it possible? Yeah, it's definitely possible. Because all those people, you talked earlier on something else. And that's when I first thought of this, but you were going off. I didn't want to just like (laughs) stick this in there. Wait, me going off? No, I, uh-huh. I love it. You came in here a batch it out yeah, of hell. Yeah, yeah, It was yeah. great. I'm, I'm crazed about this. It's fucking this. amazing today. I'm crazed about this. But when you were talking about all these people on social media and fighting over stuff, and we see this radical politicization, politicization, God damn it, there it is again, you know, <laughs> of, of these factions wanting the other to not exist, which is another thing Andy talks about. The greatest distraction to that, and I don't know if that rabbit's too far out of the hat. Some of these people are lost, but... Overall, the greatest distraction to that is when suddenly things are at stake. Yep. Lives are on the line and we yep. got an enemy abroad. And yep. so when I look at our in what internal intelligence could be thinking, they may be thinking, holy shit, all these campaigns are working at dividing us. Like even beyond what we wanted to do because we love controlling the people to some extent so we can do what we do, which is a whole moral issue big time right there. But like this is beyond the pale so much that they're like – We need to move this forward. Mm -hmm. While we still have advantages over these guys, which we do militarily and things like that, we need to make sure that people are on the same page and suddenly like, all right, forget for a minute all this, you know, Trump, Biden, Republican, Democrat, all this stuff. We we were united on the whole front that like China is a problem. And so we fight through money for Ukraine, which I actually appreciate that Biden didn't put boots on the ground. Very much appreciate that. But- we're giving them all the fucking money in the world, right? Yeah. With another issue while China's silently kind of on the other side. And now, now the timing is, you know, 100 days out from the election, Pelosi is getting tough on Taiwan, going over there. And you hear guys like Andy who say what you want. They're in the know on some things. Yep. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. And Definitely. like, I see things that not everything he says comes to light because he does maintain overall. And he says this to broaden things. It's like, Things fall when he says it, it's like 60 to 80% confidence intervals, but he's hitting on yeah, some of them. Like absolutely. I've watched them happen live. Absolutely. No. Um, and that, that makes perfect sense to a guy like me. That makes perfect sense to a guy like me. And, you know, I want to t- talk more about, you know, you know, I don't think, I don't think the government created 9-11. I don't no. think that, but I do think that that sense of un- unity is something they, they, they like to you know, kind of get back. Um, and it's important to get it back with all the shit that's gone on. And, you know, yeah, we go in cycles, you know, back and forth as a country. Um, but I would not, there are some brilliant minds in the, in, in the community, you know, there's some brilliant minds, there's some brilliant thinkers, there's some progressive thinkers and, um, it has got to be happening, you know, at a level where at least it's being discussed. Um, have I sat on those meetings? Maybe. You know, have I been involved? Maybe. I don't know. Um, maybe I just didn't recognize it when it was mm-hmm. going down. But um, I truly do believe that we are in the deepest need for unity and for healing um, and to kind of move forward. So what scares me is the last time we were in that situation, something really bad happened, right? And 
I was in New York City this week, and I got to tell you, like, you want to talk about letting down the guard, you know, just not being with it? Holy shit. How so? Just there's no sense of, you know, situational awareness. There's there's no sense of looking around and seeing what's happening. The, the city's a mess again. It's a mess. Um, just it, it kind of shook me up a little bit. I hadn't been in a, in a while. You know, I took the ferry over. That's always a disaster anyway. They're always in, you know, some type of security status one, which means everything's good. I'm like, okay, yeah. I get, yeah. Once again, Diorio carrying, you know, yeah, yeah. We will Fireworks inspect your off. thing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, whatever. Um, you know my specialty when I go to a company. I do yes. the same thing and it worked again. Yes. But, um, you, you know, I, I just think we're, we're prime for it and – if we take it further and kind of extrapolate it out to this situation that just occurred, and then um, the fact that you've got a sitting president president that's sick, you know, really Canada. sick, yep. and you've got no real um, thought of who's on the horizon, who's on the bench. He's not calling the shots, so, though. No, I mean you agree with that, right? Totally, but yeah. but there are some there are some masterful portions of whoever is calling the shots and then there's some just absolute stupidity on people who are calling the shots for him um I, i've never seen anything like it you what do know? you mean with well the stupidity? i mean j just like um you know it's oil prices are based on the attack uh you know supply chain is is the problem covid caused all these issues like there's just you, you say like all right you got to stop that portion of it but then the orchestration of whatever got orchestrated here on these you know kind of attack on the midterms because they know the the, the left has got to think oh shit you know we we definitely we definitely have a problem here but they you know? put him in this is what i'm I saying know. though i know they put him and kamala harris no i know who's i, know. I mean but look oh at my the, god well she was she was she was an actual candidate for the big for the big office. Right? I know, but they. And what I mean, Bernie. It, the one thing I'll say about Bernie, at least he's fucking consistent. Yeah, and they fucked the ball. him. You they know, fucked like we him talk twice. About, you know, yeah. I mean, um, terribly consistent, but consistent. You know, so uh, I mean, kind of. I, I just, I just wouldn't put it by either side to really start being extremely creative when their backs are against the wall. And they feel like their backs are against the wall. And the one – think about the only thing – and this is sad too. Think about the only common ground that both sides of the aisle have recently reached, the weaponization and the failures of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the DOJ. Yeah. yeah. Yo. <laughs> Yo. You're going to put a federal monitor on the, the sitting – Attorney General? The fuck? It's bad. That's bad. I've always thought I was gonna say this earlier, but you were ripping on something else again. But like yeah. I've always thought the thing about having an AG as a part of the cabinet when it's really not It's not. I d I don't like that. It's not you part put of the cabinet, them in a bad but, position. But they're briefing on everything. I mean they're they're sitting he's got a daily with whoever he's who's ever running the show. I don't know who that is, but he's got a daily with that person. You know what do you mean a daily? Well, I mean he's think about look at Barr and Trump's relationship. Yeah. So there's got to be a relationship in the White House with someone. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Um. So. You know, I heard an interesting piece of Andy the other day on on Lev. Right? It's Lev. Lex Friedman. Lex. Yeah. I heard a great portion about the president's daily brief. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, and he's talking about like some presidents. You know, only read a couple of pages. Some presidents read the entire thing. Some presidents tell you exactly what they want and care less about all the other shit that's going on in the world. What the fuck does that guy want? He can't even comprehend. Yeah. He can't put his sport coat on, bro. Yeah. The last he fell on a bike. You know, he's sick, and I feel terrible for the fact that he's sick. He's sick. Yeah. He's really sick, and nobody's taking control of that. His he's wife old. should be bailing. You know, his wife should be pulling him out. Well, they, I don't think they wanted it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, when we're talking about the chess pieces on the board and trying to figure out, you know, why they're putting the knight to 
that space instead of that one and why the no rook's idea. over here. Yeah, no idea. I don't know, but it all does point to, you know, like constantly moving from one distraction to another and then quietly shifting things abroad. You know, I and I told this story with someone else I just had in for a podcast, but there, w- there was a reporter... There's a reporter at the New York Times who's the guy who uncovered the MK Ultra thing. Yes. And so this dude, Danny, had him on Concrete 66. And it was a really, really great podcast. This guy had a lot of good tidbits. But in the 80s, he was the New York Times South America correspondent. Okay. So he was living down there, like all over the place. And so he knew Jimmy Carter a little bit. Carter's out of office for a couple years. And... He comes to visit whatever country this guy was in. And so I guess this guy hit him up and he's like, hey, let's get a drink or whatever. So he goes and meets with Jimmy Carter for a couple hours. I think he was also doing a story to talk about reflections on the presidency and all that. And, you know, one thing about Jimmy Carter is is he was a very ineffective president. He was not good. But sadly enough, he was probably the most moral guy to ever hold that office. Dude still lives yeah. in a hundred thousand dollar house to yep. this day. Yep. Like builds and I, builds houses for habitat. An idealist, you yep. know, has never been politically yep. too involved. And so they're they're reminiscent on on what the whole experience was like and how much power the president really has. And the guy asked him, he said, you know, what what do you think like do you think that office is too powerful or not powerful enough? And he said, Well, it depends how you're looking at it. And the guy said, What do you mean? He goes, Well, at the beginning of my presidency, I invited every single living president in to meet with me. Because I just went in one on one. I wanted yeah. to pick their brain, you know, get an idea of things to expect, whatever. And the most interesting one of all of them was Nixon. And so the reporter's like, You have my attention. And he goes, So what do you say? And Carter says, Well, when we got to domestic politics, he's like, oh, who gives a fuck about all that? You know, that's just Congress. Those people suck. They never let you do anything. You're just going to fight over and move 5% here, 5% there, health care taxes. It's all whatever. Fuck it. Foreign policy, though. Now, that's where you got some power. You don't need Congress for a lot of that shit. And you can do whatever you want. And you can. that's the fun stuff. You know, imagine fucking Tricky Dick Nixon saying this. Oh, my God. And Carter's like, oh, okay. And so Carter was saying, he goes, you know, I think about that a lot now and how simple some decisions could have been for me to make and some decisions I did make. And I don't know about that. Like, that needs a little more oversight. And largely today, a lot of that same power exists. So when we're bitching about domestic politics, and in this case, in fairness, this is the middle... We're, this is a former U.S. president, so there's international implications. Right. But when we're bitching about all this stuff, yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on outside of here. And that's why when a guy like Andy actually soberly breaks down what's going on in Ukraine and some of the smart moves the Biden administration is making, some of the dumb moves they're making, neither of which any of us are thinking about because it's over there, it's separate, we're forgetting about it, and we're fighting here. You see the chess pieces happening, and you do see, I'm not even calling this out as a bad thing, I'm just saying it's a fact, like that's a proxy war happening there. Mm-hmm. You got China on one side of the equation, us mm-hmm. on the other side, we're not fighting. It's Russia and Ukraine, but we're funding, we're supporting, and we're kind of setting up for things. So when I see stuff like this happen, that's why my head goes back to that because I'm like, all right, they're not looking tomorrow. They're looking two years from now, three years from now, four years from now. Who do they got to deal with in office? Well, one of the things that the CIA doesn't like is that Trump was one of the most heavy privatized yeah. – Andy talks about this too – private, yeah, his intelli- private yeah, intelligence. Yeah, his intel agencies were, were hired. So that's scary because – He didn't even want to talk to – he didn't even want to talk to the agency. That's what I'm saying. So days. they lose power. Yep. They lose influence. Yep. You see how they could but be the worried irony, about that? Think about this, though. The irony of him bringing Pompeo from the CIA to the State Department when he really didn't... That's... I, I, I hope someday I can have the one-on-one with Mike, but it hasn't happened yet. What, what do you mean the irony of that? Well, I mean, he didn't want that intelligence agency reporting to him, yet he brings the guy who was running that show to the State, the State Department. Who's talking to him every minute of every day, and is the diplomat that's taking most of the intelligence agency's information and turning it into product, turning it into policy. But he also was Mike was was an outsider there, right? At like CIA, he, he, yeah, he had oh, never, yeah. yeah, he didn't come up no, at all. Yeah. yeah, he didn't yeah. come at all. No, no. through no. the through the rank and file. But still, you know, 
how much did they that's the other thing like how much how much do they tell him the truth there he's not one of them smart guy though it doesn't matter it's a lot of people yeah but he's getting the right info i'm i'm confident in that there's a lot that goes on oh hell yeah you know it doesn't take many hell yeah there's no there's no doubt about that bro i mean let's be honest no doubt so what what are you on this specific situation though what are the next things you're looking at and this is coming out like probably five days after we're recording this four days after we're recording so some things may happen but like what needs to happen next that hasn't yet that needs to clear this up for you to feel better about it or for this to be see its way through and and be done with well i'd like to see i'd like to at least get some information that indicates that what what the crimes the underlying crimes are that are being uh kind of thrown out in the affidavit so what would the evidence that's being collected what will that translate to with regards to an actual crime And, and and just because just because a search warrant is issued doesn't mean anybody's getting getting indicted. You know, I mean, I can't even tell you the numbers on that, but it doesn't necessarily mean, okay, somebody's getting arrested, somebody's getting indicted, somebody's, you know, the investigation continues or it goes off in a different direction. So I would like to see, and I'm hoping that we see at least that portion, at least the portion that says, here are the underlying crimes that the search warrant, you know, um, kind of looked to collect evidence in order to prove, disprove, or um, create a continuing investigation, right? Mm. Then, I mean, we're never going to see the body of the affidavit. I don't think we are going to see that. Maybe we will. I don't know. Um, I'd also like to see, like you said, what was taken, what actually was taken and how much, um, you know, actual um, detail is going to be involved if that's let out or if that's provided what will the detail within those vouchers, because that's what they are. They're just evidence logs and vouchers that indicate, here's what we took from you. You know, and it, it needs to be very specific. But will we get that information? That would be telling as to whether or not it's actually the pursuit of a criminal charge. If we don't see that, if we don't see either or of those, I think it's exactly what we're thinking it is. And that is just a shot across the bow in order to put him in a situation where he has to make a decision to either fight harder, which we know that's what it's going to be either yes. way, or it gives leverage to whatever side we think this is going to. Um, if we do see it, it still doesn't mean that's not the case, but um, normally that's followed with um, kind of a negotiation of scope whether or not they took what they were supposed to take and you know, be like a, a turn back of some of the evidence that didn't fall within the scope or it could be scoped with regards to the actual crimes um, that were being, um, you know, kind of the allegations that were being put forth, whether or not the evidence that was taken, and this will all be fought in court if it's a real search warrant, um, whether or not those things match with what the allegations of the crimes were. So there might be a turn back there. You'll see a lot of court time. Or um, November comes and this is still all pending and the midterms turn out midterms turn out how they are and this just falls off the face of the earth. I think it's a shit or a fart. I think they're fucked either way at this point because if they don't bring an indictment, it looks like the narrative will be, well, they cave to the insurmountable public pressure because of what happened and you know how badly this was all conducted and they're therefore corrupt and if they do bring an indictment they'll be like oh my god they're criminally going after a former president to prevent him from running for office again this is the fbi getting involved that's why the carelessness of how some of this was put together you can't you can't deny so the the only thing we haven't addressed today and we got a couple minutes left because i got to get you out of here but the only thing we haven't addressed i just thought of this was the representative, I think his name's Scott Perry. The I, he's a Republican. I, I don't even know from what state. I didn't even know who the guy was. But he had his phone seized by three FBI agents at hmm. an airport two days ago. Hmm. You didn't hear about this? No, I didn't hear about it. So he just reported like I had no heads up 
the FBI came up with a warrant and took my phone off me. Is that does that happen a lot, or what, what's the story there? N- no, I mean it never happened in my entire time. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not reassuring. Yeah, I mean um, even back before the use of cell phones, um, no. I mean, it would be, you know, subscriber, toll information, subscriber information subpoenaed from the phone company. Um, it's a different world nowadays. So that phone now is usually taken and it's it's either, um, there's a couple of companies like Cellbrite does an immediate kind of transfer of information or even a cloning of the phone. So access to the bureau, you know, would become um, easier to do than back in the day when... Apple wasn't cooperating. I, no, that 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 there's something. I mean, did what's the context? Like, who is he? He's a representative. Is allegedly, it, what it is referred to is they they want it as evidence for things around post election and denying the election results or something. And this comes on the heels of like <laughs> Alex Jones's attorneys accidentally leaking his cell phone data for two years to the defense, who then turned it over. To the, to the prosecutors and stuff for stuff. So I don't know if it's related to that, but... Yeah, that's just... That it doesn't seems make, nutty. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, but it does indicate, I guess, a little bit more about what they're looking at than, um, you know, his... Well, it's the same shit they tried to impeach him for, though, you know? Right. Yeah, that's I what I'm mean, saying. They keep on making the guy a victim. They got us... I don't know. I it's don't weird. Know. It's a weird dynamic, and it, but that is not common to, to seize the cell phone. Good to know. I mean, if if it were going to be done, I guess it's you know it's similar to to a computer, where we would come and and actually make a copy, and, you know, transfer uh, your hard drive onto a device and and use that as an, an evidence. You know, then it, then it takes a minute to kind of analyze that so that the agents can review with keywords and different things along those lines. But a cell phone, you know, they could transfer that shit and like half hour and they took it they took it so it's a little and then weird. that opens up you know it, now can you get the password if he didn't offer the password consent for the password it just sits that's a whole nother conversation yeah, it just sits because apple's not helping no i'm not gonna touch that i would yeah. love to touch that yeah, they're not me. helping you know you know andy won't he wasn't involved you were but like he won't even buy an apple product because of that He's like, I'm not going to help the company that wouldn't help us with San Bernardino. I'm like, well. Yeah, it makes sense, though. I'm like, yeah, it's a little a little bigger than that. It book. makes sense. That's weird, though. It's weird. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Listen, really, really appreciate you coming yeah, in. Man. So last I'm minute glad I'm this. here and uh, want to say hi to everybody. Everybody, hope everybody's good. Stay safe. Don't worry. All right. Well, let's see how this turns out. Thank you, as always, sir. My we'll pleasure. We'll do it again. My pleasure. Everybody else, you know what it is. Give it a thought. Get back to me.